Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to SI 2020. We are live here in Montreal, rounding out the group stage here for day number one of the group stage with our final matchup. It is going to be a Brazilian versus Brazilian matchup, and we are proud to be bringing it to you. My name is Blue. Joining me here on the desk this evening is Stokes. Stokes, what do we think of this matchup? Nip versus Liquid, a game that you and I really didn't do too much research on. We we're supposed to be casting something else, but we're here. I'm excited about it. It's a Brazilian matchup. It doesn't get better than this. This is usually the pinnacle of aggression that we see inside of Rainbow Six Siege's esports ecosystem. Nip versus Liquid is something that has just been fun every single time that I've ever seen it come up, whether it be a Pro League day, Atlan, what have you, but now it's on the biggest stage that we possibly have. I'm very excited to get through this one. And indeed, it's looking like it's going to be a fun one again. We can take a look at the bracket for this group and see where exactly things have been shaping up and where some of the other teams within this, within these two teams uh, group, where exactly they may end up as well if they have played their match for today, but I believe they're also playing it off stream right now. So we'll try to get that on screen for you guys in just a second here, see where exactly these teams are ending up and where they could end up over the next few days as the groups continue to play out. Now there you go, as you can see, Giants is currently in the process of playing MIBR back over on our mainstream. And then here on stream B, we've got Team Liquid going up against NIP. The winners of each match facing off, I believe tomorrow, we also have the elimination matches down there that will be set up by these opening two as well. Yeah, it's Giants trying to fight, fight off all of the Brazilian squads. It's kind of a weird group and how this, you know, all broke down, but you really can't give too much crap to the people because obviously it was Milos and Emzo just picking balls. That's literally it. They just grabbed a ball out of thing and it just happened that three Brazilian squads got in the same group. So please send all your complaints their way. Yeah, please send all of your <laughs> your complaints to at Milos the Medic on Twitter. Please do that. I'd, I'd greatly appreciate it. But uh, no, overall, I would say, though, that Group C has actually surprised quite a few people, especially with how Giants have been performing, but these two are the two inside of Group C that I saw making it out. They've both been so very impressive. MIBR can also be very impressive on LAN, but Liquid especially is a team that has so many fans across every single eSport, and specifically in Rainbow Six Siege as well. You've had this roster that has just been world beaters when it comes to main stages, and they've been some, well, actually the only other reason, uh, region besides EU to beat G2, to beat Empire, to beat these titans of Siege. Yeah, absolutely. However, the past few months have not necessarily been the kindest for this team, though. We started to see some of the other teams try to take their place as some of those top dogs in Brazil, and I think that they've come very close on NIP. NIP has had a very, very promising past couple of months, in my opinion, and has been making huge strides to improve the overall performance of their team. So I'm also feeling pretty confident about them going into this matchup. Everybody's been pegging this one as one that's going to be really close. I don't necessarily know that's going to be the case. Uh, we'll take a look at the rosters, though, before we talk too much about what could happen in this matchup, starting out with Team Liquid. Well, on Team Liquid, we have the man himself, Nesk. That's the one that everyone loves to highlight, but we still got a banger of a roster with the remainder. Paula, Sexy Cake, PSK, and Moringa. Paula, the newest addition to this squad, as he joined pretty recently. Actually, actually excuse me, it's Moringa. I always do that between Moringa, those two, yeah. but it's Moringa that joined last when Zig left the team, and Moringa's actually made quite a bit of an impact, playing a lot of the support role, but he gets a lot of info on his drones and just makes things run a whole heck of a lot smoother. We'll take a look at the other roster here in just a moment and start talking a little bit more about NIP as well, since they'll also be stepping up to the plate here in this matchup for the first time at SI 2020. And for those of you that might be newer to Siege, we'll definitely want to show you their roster and see what exactly they bring to the table. To show you the guys from Liquid one more time here, they've got the seal. They always have to make sure. Seal. Yeah, always, you gotta you gotta make sure you have the seal. The lucky their, seal. They're positioning it right now. So I feel like every we'll single. We'll come back team, to that later. Yeah, I feel like every single team has their lucky stuffed animal. Um, Dan's got a bionicle. And yeah. I just got the koala. Yeah. Uh, G2 bionicle. has one too, right? Uh, yeah, they might. I, think I don't they, think so. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> I don't think Fabian later. is a very you know fluffy animal kind of guy. Pengo is out in the lobby, so we'll ask him later <laughs> if he's still out there. NIP, in the meanwhile, taking a look at their roster. A little bit more evenly spread, in my opinion, in the stats department, especially when we look towards the ratings. But there's your roster. Muzi, Psycho, Pino, Julio, along with Kamikaze, with the two leading players in the stat department most recently being spread between Muzi and Psycho, but also Pino. The real standout thing, if we want to talk about stats for a second, though, isn't even on the 
this graphic right now, it's actually the clutch factor that comes out of four out of five players on this team. Every single player on the squad, except for Pino, has multiple 1VX clutches on record within the last few months alone. This is on top of good, you know, still plant utility coming out from players like Kamikaze. They get committed to it. So that could end up being a really big X factor, especially for me going into this matchup, just knowing how much more of it is there on so many different players from NIP. When, meanwhile, on Team Liquid, you really only get that with one or two players at most. Yeah, I think the main thing to highlight for me through the history of Liquid as well as Nip inside of these matchups and just what they both bring to the table is that the ban phase should go pretty smooth. These teams play against each other a lot. They're regularly play against or against each other inside of Pro League, yep. and both these teams have mainstay bans. Liquid's being border. They don't like the map. They've banned it 16 times. Won it twice, lost it once. So it doesn't seem like they really want to keep that one in the deck. So we'll probably see that removed first. But overall, this Liquid Squad still does stay objective-oriented. We have eight plants coming out from Sexy Cake and a couple others to string along with the rest of the roster. Well, you guys have heard enough about what we think of these teams, at least for now. So let's take it over to a nice little interview we did with both of these squads. They were getting ready for today's matchup. I am Muzi, my role is in Trigger, and I am playing for Ninjas in Pyjamas. I'm Paulo, I'm the Trigger for Team Liquid. Well, we started at the Pro League, we didn't go well there, we couldn't classify to the finals, so we, our first chance was to, in DreamHack Montreal, we make a good run, but we lost at the final to TSM. We had a lot of mistakes in the match, but after that we classified to Ogapit in Croatia, there we could show our, our best shape and let's say that everything was fitting as we planned and we could get the spot. My competitors are MIBR, Giants Gaming and Team Liquid. Um, between MIBR and Giants, it's very hard to predict because both teams are playing very well. I think our state now is the best shape we we had in a long time, and we are really ready for the turn. The competitors, I think it, everyone that classified to the Six Invitation are great teams, and we have to be aware of all of them, but we are first to look at our opponents in our group, and, but of course we wanted our revenge against Empire. They are a really great team, and we are really interested to play against them. Uh, so, my first matchup is against Team Liquid. Our first matchup is against NIP. My message for my opponents is that in LAN things were different. My message for my opponents is that we can make a great game and show the best uh, possible siege. Interesting note there on the final touch that we had from the representative from Team Liquid saying that on land things work different. And that's coming off of the last two times that these guys have played each other on a Pro League in the LATAM region where we've seen NIP win both times. A 7-5 victory back in Pro League Season 10 in the second half of it. And also for Season 11, the most recent one in this first half that was just played, another win for them at 7-4. And another thing to notate is they're coming off of some of the best seeds that they've played in a while, winning OGA Pit to get here. Liquid is on the high ground at this point. Ninjas in Pajamas has to try and find a way to battle back. Nesk versus Muzi in this matchup, and uh, seems pretty close overall. Nesk has a little bit higher rating, but still the KD ratio spread and everything else. Nesk pretty is also even. invisible. Yeah, he's, well, I mean, that's just the Amber Rice guy. That's, that's, that's a superpower. It's moving forward. Anyway, we'll take a look at the maps here as well and see where exactly these teams would like to go. We're just going to roll right through them here, folks. Ban on the border and coastline, followed up by picks on a cafe and clubhouse. Villa and Bank are the next two bands, and Consulate is our final map. So we got cafe, clubhouse, and Consulate for the matchup. Cafe, clubhouse, Consulate. All right. Well, a couple things banned out early on that I really didn't expect. I honestly thought we'd get a Bank pick at least. That's a Latam special right there, but it actually gets knocked out in the second ban phase. So pretty straightforward play here. 
Nothing favoring too heavy in anyone's favor, but again, that border ban coming out initially from Liquid. They don't like the map. They've banned it 16 times in history. Why not make it 17? Yeah, and it's a little bit hard to tell, at least looking at NIP's perspective, how this map pool is going to go for them. They have one of the flattest map pools that I've seen amongst all the teams here at SI. And by that, I mean, there's nothing really stands out. They all have a lot of like very middle of the road, like 2-2 sort of records on maps right now. So it doesn't really appear to be anything that they necessarily excel on. However, I think with a lot of Lightam teams, it's going to be the individualistics that allow for them to push ahead, and especially on a map like Cafe. We'll see if that'll remain the case. In we go into the very first map of our last match of the day, folks. Winner moves on further into the Group C upper bracket. Loser goes down to the lower bracket. Well, fun fact, Liquid has never banned Cafe in recent history. About six months, I do believe, is what we have on record. But they're 7-1-1 one one on it, so do have a very good record on that front. But traditionally speaking, they banned Thatcher. Thatcher already being removed. Take away Maverick instead. Only get rid of the defensive. A Jaeger. What? So... <laughs> Reasoning for that, I was actually having a conversation with a couple of pros yesterday about how Goyo has been instituted inside of Siege. And it's for Goyo, to where you can't throw things to burn those shields. So that's going to make it a little bit... Or excuse me, so that you can throw things. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, the opposite make, of that. Makes it a little bit easier to deal with the shields, basically, when you don't have the Jaeger in play. And hey, that's an annoying roamer you don't have to deal with anymore either, so... Yeah, that gun. That definitely gun not, is definitely not the main reason why you'd ban him, though. No, no, you're getting rid of him so that you can get rid of Goyo shields easier. That is the, it's the whole choice of getting rid of Jaeger. All right, guys, well, we're going to be starting out actually not on the traditional, usual third floor site that we see a lot of teams go to. It's going to be over here in Reading Room and Fireplace instead. So once again, a lot of teams here at SI over, and over the past few months, we've seen them starting to shift away from those more traditional picks and kind of forge their own path about the way they like to start games off just so their opponents don't get as comfortable as a start as they're used to. Yeah, Reading Room, Fireplace, uh very unique way to set up this site because it's actually on two opposite areas of the same floor. So you, there's actually a hallway that goes in between them. You usually see a lot of soft destruction in between these two, just so you can see it from the opposite site. A little bit of a hold upstairs as well with someone playing white stairs, and all of a sudden you have yourself a nice setup. We'll see what Ninjas and Pajamas take is on it, but they won't have access to the Mira or the Jaeger, so we'll not be seeing them played. But Thanks to some very nifty UI, we will get to see how everyone uses their utilities. You can see Kamikaze's bullet count going down inside of his M590, making soft destruction holes in the walls connecting to each other. Besides, this will have the players from Liquid out onto the board here in just a moment for themselves, bringing a fairly typical lineup to deal with this, although not necessarily, like I said, expecting it to be on the second floor. But this is pretty much your cut and dry, get everything in terms of the basic utility that you need for the attackers from a load out there on Liquid's side. So, Funny enough, the last time that Liquid played any team on this map, it was against Elevate instead of Pro League, and they ended up tying. Hmm. Yeah, and Elevate hasn't had the best season. It's been, you know, touch and go for the most part for Elevate inside of the uh, Latam region. But Liquid definitely performing better overall. As you might expect, I think. Yeah, as you definitely expect. Yeah. <laughs> I think actually Ele Elevate surprised a lot of people. And actually inside of Latam, I think the most surprising roster for everybody right now is INTZ. They've been performing so well this season as opposed to their uh, recent history within like the last year. Which is great because again, they've kind of been a team that a lot of people, myself included, kind of like discounted in a lot of situations. So it's Just good to see, see another contender awesome. sort of starting to rise up over the time. Even had a little bit of like Team 1 starting up a bit, it seemed like, over the summer. But uh, it seems like they've kind of fallen off a little bit and have had struggles trying to make it to the international stage since then. Kind of had the luminosity effect where when they first came out the gate, they were super potent, very strong, and then things kind of died down over time. Well, no ADS is to try and eat up any of the impacts from Nesk, so we'll quickly dispatch one of the Goyo shields, so the band already working in Liquid's favor. So we got Team Liquid in the meanwhile still taking their time with looking to get control. No one from NIP has been fleshed out of their position upstairs. As you can see, they've got two to three players looking to actively hold control over on the white half of the third floor. You've got Nesk looking to isolate out one of the players sitting in the back. That should be the Doc being played by Pino. They've got a hard ping onto him now, but the first attempt to take him down is unsuccessful. Pino holds the line, finishes off Nesk, and he's going to have time to stim himself back up. 
Very unique take here from Liquid as they're working the east window, something we don't see happen too often. It's usually a very dangerous area to play, but Liquid finally finding some kills and a very peculiar gun choice here from the Liquid member PSK. He's taking the AUG instead of the G8A1 or the 5.52 Commando. Not a gun we see too often as because it has a very, very weird model inside of the game. So it takes up most of your screen. And especially with how potent the G8A1 is right now, very unique overall. They're gonna get chucked in here in a second. Should pop open the wall leading into storage. Giving Moringa or another teammate a better angle to play off of. Kamikaze is gonna end up getting dropped here over the next few seconds after Pino was finally dealt with there a few seconds ago as well. Kamikaze, no sign of him being picked up. Actually, it does look like they are gonna be able to retrieve him a little bit further back. So scratch that, the smoke is brought back into the play. Although at very low HP, first smoke grenade is gonna go in right on top of Moringa. It does not spread far enough to hit Sexy Cake, but it does end up taking down Moringa from the corner. We'll have to be very careful of that. Sexy Cake also gonna take some pressure as he tries to get his teammate back up. So far, no additional losses from NIP, so this should be an easy retake for them now. In a 3v2 situation, though, it's not going to be the case. PSK and Paula, both still up and both still looking to cause problems from the third floor. PSK, in fact, taking out Julio as he manages to run into a Claymore. And now, we're back to an even keel footing here. There's going to be a nice find for Muzi, but Paula responds in his own regard. Down to the 1v1, and Kamikaze at low HP is going to have to try and force out Paula, but has not been successful in doing so here so far. The Breach will give away his position. He's going to try to obscure himself in the smoke, and it might just work, but never mind. Paula finds the angle on Kamikaze, and Liquid shut down round number one. Liquid, so intelligent in how they took that map, made sure to take top floor and maintain that control even into the post plant. No one panicked, no one hopped down. They had the area that they needed to be able to watch for the post plant. Ninjas and Pajamas not really having an answer, even though it was a very nice shot from the Ella. But it did just come down to some very nice sledge work from Liquid, and all of a sudden they have a round. Ninjas and Pajamas, though, just not able to capitalize on the situation at the very end of that round. Whereas Liquid was able to find that eventual angle. And I think that the main thing to notate for that last little instance is that that is the power of uh, the recent tiny smoke adjustment that they've made to where the smoke is more see-through on those toxic canisters as opposed to how it used to be. So give a little bit easier line of sight, especially with you know smoke also being client-sided to where you see it different from as opposed to what you're seeing on each screen. Made it a little bit easier, more than likely for Paula. So a Team Liquid coming out on top of round number one here. Successful attack going their way. NIP is going to choose to not try and reattempt that fireplace site. Reading room fireplace will instead work their way upstairs to try and take a third floor, that traditional first site that a lot of, especially casual players, love to drift towards on the opening of the map. This usually tends to be the most simple site in terms of play style for the defenders to try and win. Well, in recent history for head-to-heads between these two rosters, Ninjas and Pajamas has actually won the last two matchups, 5-7 and 4-7. So this will make for three in a row, but if you want to go by maps, it'll make it even more if they're able to get that 2-1 victory or even 2-0 victory, depending on how Cafe goes. But for right now, Liquid in the driver's seat. And on all positions, it's going to be on offense, which is something we don't see happen too often, as Cafe is one of our most defender-sided maps in the current map pool. So Liquid quickly ascending over towards the third floor where the large majority of the team is going to start their attack on the roof. We'll be grouping up there. Like we said before, the operator lineup is pretty much as default as you can get to attack this site. So we'll see the sledge pop up with the hatches very quickly. PSK will start looking for any utility that might be present and specifically how they might have set this up if, it, if it's a pattern that he recognizes from the past. And over the next few seconds of droning, They'll start to open up an opportunity for them to more than likely drop down in through these hatches and start getting control. Quick dispatch of a castle barricade. Overall, though, Liquid making good time as they still have plenty of time on their side. A minute 54, but as we all know, they can always go to the defense whenever. Moringa with a very nice place grenade. Bounces in through new drop to take out Pino. Liquid still working their way inside. Drones still inside as they're working their way in. Just need a little bit more info game. Might be a nice shot here, but no, is this going to be a little bit of damage to Psycho as Nesk is pressuring from the opposite windows. Two repels going on right now, one from each side, one from the south, one from the west. Frag grenades pouring in, but they're not going to claim any lives just yet. Ninjas of Pajamas has been able to back off towards Pixel. 
Liquid has most control of Christmas. And yeah, the damage on Psycho not even going to stick at this point due to him being on docks. That's an easy heal for him to get him right back into the game. Another nade coming off the intel from a hard ping is going to try to knock out a player, but it looks like there's a reinforced shield and Muzi able to peek after its demise to finally take out that pesky player on Repel at the Windows. A lot of progress being made here by Liquid. Despite that early kill they got on the Pino, they've been unable to get a lot of control here upstairs, and they've now got less than a minute to fully finish the execute. Finally, another kill is picked up by them as Moringa pick finds one. Julio, though, just a second later, trades it back once again. Julio doing a great job. Ninjas in pajamas overall doing a very great job of slowing down this liquid take. It doesn't seem like they have an answer for this white hall play. More drones finally coming in. Ness trying to bait a shot with his shoulder. He'll do so eventually, but Muzi just stays on that left click and denies him entry. Exothermic charge down on the freezer now as they're trying to make a couple new sight lines, but still have to worry about why to pre-fire, but he just sees his shoulder not able to land any shots. It's all left up to Sexy Cake and Moringa. Sexy Cake works his way on site. He eventually takes down one. They're able to stave off this inevitably, but no, it's going to be Julio with the double kill now. Going for the triple with the pistol, and he hits the headshot. Ninjas in pajamas find their first defensive round. Good work from Julio indeed. A little bit messy right now from NIP on these defensive setups, but it's looking like they have positioning in order to close it down. Just a lot of fights being taken that are eventually ending up ending up into the hands of uh, Team Liquid right now, which doesn't really seem like the way it should play out, but it's going that way. So Team Liquid ending up now with a tie game one to one. It's also gonna cause the first force transition of a site for the defenders here. They could go back over to that reading room to try it again, but they're thinking that that was two one sided in Liquid's favor. So it's back down into the kitchen instead to try for their second round. Yeah, overall, I'd say that take from Liquid was set up very nicely. They just never actually made the push. Everyone got to play inside of Pixel, waste time. Liquid never was on the forefront of that round. They never had control of the situation. Ninjas in Pajamas continued to throw bodies at them, but it was more of just a, hey, you know, quick leg look and then dance back to your original position. Liquid just really didn't have a dog in the race. Yeah, I mean, way too slow to get control ultimately from Team Liquid as well. Not even dropping hashes until under a minute remaining on the clock here as well, let alone having to try and quickly get the freezer door, which again, they accomplished all that despite the short timer. You have to give props for that. Uh, but ultimately at the end of the round, just not enough time to do things like the extra drone work that might have been necessary to help them out a little bit in the late round, uh, along with, of course, just actually having the intel from those drones to execute upon. So just firing a bit at the wind there towards the end not enough presence in order to get them a second round going. So NIP holds the line, mainly with that nice effort from uh, Julio sitting in the back of the cocktail bar. Into the third round we go. The first kitchen defense for either team here now is NIP. Looks to shut this one up. I like the setup here from Ninjas and Pajamas, especially with the Mozzie and using those pests. Very important operator that is going to be in a lot of like, or excuse me, Mozzie's grown to be an operator a lot of teams like due to how creative you can get with his utility. It steals drones away from your opponents. You want to take that utility and use it for yourself, actually, with his kit. You have your own drone army with the Aussie. Another operator, though, on the Ninjas in Pajamas lineup coming out, Alibi, which is an operator we don't see too often. You guys probably saw those uh, Prismas sitting inside. They're holograms of herself, where if you shoot it, you actually get marked five times in quick succession can be used in those default pre-fire areas just to make Liquid feel a little bit more pressure. Don't have to peek off of it, but obviously more intel is good intel. Next will quickly reach the top of the map here as he's going to work with Paula. As Paula works on the drone work there in order to get Ness to the inside. Ness, I believe, will be the offender here once a minimum the ball area and potentially Freezer has been cleared out. Not the only one as well. Sex Kick also helping out with one of his drones that I believe was pre-placed at the beginning of the round. They'll start to work their way in. They're going to catch uh, one of the Legion Mons getting thrown down there on stairs. So some good intel going their way. Oh, some bad timing from Nesk, though. Ends up unscoping just as the peak for Muzi goes out. Still, Muzi takes a massive amount of damage and is eventually found by Moringa. So not a massive amount of harm overall for missing the kill on Nubalk. Oh, this is so smart from Moringa. Just pop the floor. Use one of your frag grenades to get rid of that Electro Claw of Kaid. Now you guys have access to the hatch. So they just need Sexy Cake to come and get it now because it has been reinforced. Nest though sees a man rotating up red and he'll eventually get all the way upstairs. Ninjas and pajamas dove excuse me, my god. 
Ninjas of Pajamas has definitely grown to like this very wild style of siege play where they just throw roamers at you at all times. And stuff like oh. this sexy cake gets demolished. A brief fire from Psycho. They knew he was outside. Eventually makes his way into mining, but Nesk shuts him down, but not before he could already do the damage that he needed to. Sexy Cake, a very pivotal person inside of this lineup for the offense, as he is the only hard destructor, as well as he had the diffuser. Psycho showing some great awareness up until the very end of that play right there. Knew he had the window below him open, so knew he would have been able to safely get back to the inside. Even did initially catch Nesk rotating out through the other window, but for some reason didn't catch the re-rotation in through the mining window that would eventually lead to his death. Either way, great play from him. Nice spot for Moringa. He's lucky that Kamikaze doesn't seem to notice it. He stands right in that position for a good two to three seconds. It just knocks him right out of the play. Nas gonna move forward, but the view model of the gun blocks out the push from Julio. He walks right in, under five seconds remaining here. What? what? The double kill out of nowhere with the skeleton key and Liquid steal the round out of Nip's hands. I had no idea where Moringa had moved because of those what? That was <laughs> that was incredible. But no, I had no idea where Moringa had went because we had switched down to the people inside of the kitchen. I didn't see him off screen or anything like that. All of a sudden, this man's at the kitchen door to be the savior of Liquid. Down at the very dying seconds of the round, the skeleton key pays off in dividends. That was truly something incredible, especially when it seemed like Liquid had no chance in hell of winning that round. Nicely done. The double kill on the skeleton key. First time I've personally seen that. And we are going to rotate back here now after a very unfortunate turn of events for NIP into the reading room and fireplace site as they have completed the runaround here. So back to one of the only other sites they can attempt at this point. We do have a six pick as well, away from the Goyo onto a pulse, as I'll try to hide Defender Psycho this time to get the team additional intel. Attacker. It can't be very happy about that if you're ninjas in pajamas, but it's just got to be water off the back. You got to just let it roll, things happen. Liquid definitely did get very lucky in that instance, but Liquid did a lot of positives inside that round. The only issue that really happened was that they let Muzi get upstairs. That was really the only error, and they were just a touch late on that. So, with that being, you know, obviously the main thing for Ninjas and Pajamas that went extremely well was getting rid of the hard breach and making it to where they couldn't have an effect on the round in that way anymore, especially with the diffuser being outside. You thought it was going to be Ninjas and Pajamas, but Liquid just winning off of heroics. And again, that's just something that happens in Siege. And so into the next round, we will go here. Nip going to try and pull off the defense here on the second floor one more time. This is where Team Liquid was able to get that control into the late round here. Still a very close fought affair, as it often is in these Latin America focused games. And ultimately, still seemingly with control over it. Oh, oh my God. And the that timing, timing today. Especially for NIP, it that's hurts the my second heart. time. That it just hurts my heart when that. Remember when, like, I think it was Julio did the, like, the same thing on the last round? Uh, no, I think that was I think it was actually Nesk, excuse me. Nesk yeah. had like scoped in on the Legion and yeah. had that one free. So just the second time in this game we've had a player just barely miss because of a bad unscoped timing. Yeah, they just love to make my watch tell me that my heartbeat is too high. That's what they love doing. Let me tell you. You have a problem. You should, <laughs> <laughs> should get that checked out. The passive just breathe. Have you tried breathing? The passive aggressive Apple Watches. You know? <laughs> it's I feel like that thing always says that it's like the worst and it's like it's not a good time, Bob. I like when it. Uh, I like when it tells you to exercise. Oh my god! Your, your ring's usually further along by now. <laughs> like Congratulations! Just, like, you, you stood up. <laughs> like, that's the worst one. This is like, congrats! You stood up enough. It's like, oh my god! Am I really that fat? Congratulations! You stood up for one minute. <laughs> All right. It beats your average from the last week. Well, moving forward now, we've got Liquid once again vying for that upstairs control, and this did take them a pretty long time last round. Not going to be the case this time, though, as they already did knock Pino down. He was able to stim himself back up from the looks of things, but Nesk going to take him out regardless. He's eliminated Muzi, still with presence upstairs, though, and he was not here last time. Remember, with how slow Liquid is moving, it seems as though that they were oh. aware of his presence, and now Ness going to self-tag. They do manage to catch Muzi's position, finally, and bring him down to 25 HP on the retreat, but Kamikaze now surprises. Psycho, in the meanwhile, comes in on the pulse and finds himself a kill from a Nitro Cell, and this, like that, we're even again, down to a 3v3. A great take from Liquid and an even better defense from Ninjas in pajamas, able to rotate away safely upstairs. 
Liquid still got that kill on the smoke, but Ninjas and Pajamas made sure that they paid for it and kept things on equal footing. Liquid also playing those east windows, which is something we don't see happen too, too often, right. kind of like this exothermic being used on soft destruction, but they need more lines of sight, and they don't really have anybody else. Well, actually, no, they have plenty of people to do it. I really don't know why Sexy Cake is using this, but hey, why not? You, why not use your last exothermic on, on the ground? But anyways, the East Repel was the thing that really stood out to me <laughs> as Liquid just keeps taking the words right out of my mouth. The last exothermic charge being used on Pillar's Wall to open up another line of sight into reading. Actually not even going to use that line of sight at the moment here. Both Moringa and Sexy Cake just pushing directly in the library. A bit of misdirection, and it seems like it might have actually worked because they're planning completely unawares to NIP's presence right now. Goes onto the ground, rotates her on the way in. Moringa trying to watch out for presence from above here as he still has a couple of those skeleton ski shots left, actually quite a few of them, which once again raises the question, why did we use the exothermic on the ground? But we'll come back to that later. Anyway, the hold right now seeming solid for Liquid in the post plant. Moringa just in a bit of a hot spot if he gets pushed from the top side. Psycho jumping down, but both players on Liquid hold their own, picking up kills and the round with it as they claim yet another one. Overall, a great take by Liquid, but so many just weird intricacies yeah. that happened there, especially with that exothermic charge on the soft floor. Why? <laughs> Why? You literally we'll never know. <laughs> I, like, I saw two dead people out of the corner of my eye. I was like, oh, it's Buck and Sledge. And then I looked, I was like, oh, wait, no, they're alive. Why are... What? I just assumed that Sexy Cake was correct, so I didn't even question myself. And then I looked over, I was like, oh, wait, no, I am right. Like, what is going like, guys, on? Guys, I swear, it's just a big breaching charge. It works the same. <laughs> Has a much longer fuse time, but it makes a larger hole. That's also, it's really loud, so <laughs> they'll probably shoot it. <laughs> Who cares? I have two of them. I don't even need it. Oh, you know, just use it on the ground. I don't even care. I don't even worry about it. <laughs> so, a potential six pick is waiting on the confirmation, but it looks like the game locked it in for him there. Onto the Habanas. We'll finally move away from the thermite. We'll see a little bit more action coming in this time from Sexy Cake onto the Habana. That was uh, that was a round. That was something. Round and a half. Technically, it's been four rounds and uh, like one eighths, something like that. Okay. I didn't actually get what you said. Wait, well, I said you said it's a round and a half, and I said, well, technically, there's been four rounds and one eighth. Oh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, where'd the eighth come from? <laughs> <laughs> because we're in prep phase. Oh, okay. We're yeah. still technically in round. You were five, going for like actual yeah, accuracy. Yeah. Though. I was just making yeah. stuff up. I'm like 90% positive that I was accurate on that as well. So, Let's see what would I'm not going to do this math. This is my uh, my high school my high school math teacher can eat her heart out, let me tell you. Wait, did you have one or multiple? I had multiple. Okay. Were they all the girls or? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, my geometry teacher was a guy. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say like man. he hated me. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> would never guess. I don't think I remember any of my math teachers from high school, to be honest with you. I just remember him because he named his daughter Zelda. Is that is he Robin Williams? And he named his son Crash. That's a cool, those are cool names. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that's like a cool name. They're names from games, that's the thing, is, you know, so. Pretty cool guy, to be completely honest with you, but you know what's even cooler? Drones. An information yeah. game from Team Liquid. They've done a very good job of this overall. Make sure you guys are paying attention to the left-hand side of your screen. When those circles are just simply gray, it means that they have a drone in their pocket. When they are white, it means it's currently out on the field. And when it is an X, it means that that drone is dead. I've overall today really enjoyed count, uh, commentating with this UI. Yeah, we talked about a bit. There's a lot more you could touch on, on like, like we said before, and you, I believe, have already mentioned. Drone economy can be accurately discussed now. We don't have to kind of guess as to how many drones have been used and are destroyed. Um, along with things like the utility here, like we can accurately know if frag grenades or flash grenades are going unused and leading to unburnt, you know, ADSs and whatnot. Paula, I mean, while he's going to strike true with one of those nades as he knocks out the Echo, a pretty important kill if they were planning on trying to leverage those Echo drones for late round utility as now it's now that's a non-factor yeah and sexy cake actually making his first adjust adjustment on operators but this is actually going to be the second time that nesk has died as the opening kill he's been the only one to die as opening kill on his entire squad thus far otherwise it's all been opening frag into team liquid's favor also Worth note, what in God's name was that? Very nice from Sexy. That was the most RNG shot through a staircase. <laughs> what in what? Psycho will be able to trade it back relatively quickly, although it's on an unrelated fight. PSK, in the meantime, does have the position of one of the members from NIP completely locked down. I believe it's Pino, but is not really able to do anything about it currently. 
I have never seen someone kill somebody like that on a staircase. That was so incredible. Sexy Swiped Cape him out. That. Yeah, all, again, all it takes is one bullet. That is the beauty of Siege, is if you get one bullet right, it'll probably kill him. But they still have a lot of control that's needed. Seems like they know where a yokai drone is, so they'll get rid of that on new drops. So worried about the man in Christmas. But Sexy Diffuser. Cake guesses wrong. And yes, as you said, that's going to be Diffuser down inside of Cigar. PSK, Moringa, only two remaining. Moringa's going to get very aggro and gets put right through the ump 45. So down into a one versus three now is PSK. No Diffuser in hand. Saw one, but they've got every means of rotation cut off. But not before he makes a very nice shot into Christmas. It's not going to mean very much as Ninjas in pajamas trying to bring things back. PSK with a valiant effort. Literally boxed between three different players. Still is able to get one of them, but doesn't mean much at the end of the day as he's traded out the second that he gets that kill. So ultimately, first uh, successful upstairs defense. Actually, second to successful upstairs defense, I believe, for the folks on NIP as they take control of that one and bring this scoreboard just a little bit closer as we head into the final round of their defense, and they're going to try Kitchen one more time instead of trying to go back to that reading room and fireplace play. Yeah, Ninjas in Pajamas not having the best of times on defense right now. Usually on Cafe, the scoreline would be flipped. Or even worse in some instances. We have definitely seen quite a few teams that just cannot attack Cafe. And the reason being is the fact that Cafe is so utility based. And what I mean by that is it takes a lot of team play in order to achieve what you want to achieve. In order to take over Christmas, you have to have all of those repels, somebody droning, somebody that's actually going to be the spearhead to push in and take that gunfight with Pixel, as well as worrying if somebody's going to be holding your cross from Cocktail. There's a lot of things to worry about on Cafe from the offensive front. Team Liquid's just doing a very good job of it. Yeah, not only that, but NIP has been caught out a numerous times, whether it's been being blocked out of the site and just not being given really any room through either man disadvantage or positioning to retake the sites, or in the example of the last time they played this site, they pretty much won it. Had it down to a 2v1 with only a couple seconds left, but unfortunately completely missed the rotate from Moringa right up to their backside where they got the double kill on the buck to take him or to take both the remaining NIP players out from that round. So Team Liquid's getting away with, with quite a bit right now that would normally normally be stopped. NIP needs to patch those holes quickly, otherwise we could end up with a 4-2 half. Yeah, as you said, might end up with that 4-2, but I like the lineup that Liquid keep bringing. It really just handles everything that you need. You have uh, the Sledgehammer for the soft destruction of Sledge. You have IQ, which is being uh, played by PSK to identify all of the utility on the defense, as long as it's not mechanical. But as you guys can tell, everything is battery operated on the Ninjas in Pajamas side. So IQ going to be very effective. Ness still rocking the Zofia. That's one of his most played operators in his op pool. Sexy Cake switching back from the Habana. The difference between those two to notate is that Habana doesn't have to get close to things in order to use her hard destruction, whereas Thermite does. He has a little bit of a faster fuse time, but as I say that, quick trades between the two teams. Psycho takes down Moringa. That's going to be a very big pick as well. Moringa's actually been doing very good work with that buck overall through this game. Psycho doing it again for NIP. Not the first time we've seen that hop out, although this time it's going to be a little bit less successful than the previous attempt there. Just a one-for-one -one exchange, so only serves to bring the manpower down into a 4v4. Still an even fight, ultimately, at the end of the day. Just a little bit less than the defenders can spread themselves out now, though, with that roamer going down so decisively. Paula now going to drop in and start taking the rest of the third floor control away. Nesk is well ahead of them on this endeavor. As he's moved forward, is actually going to start popping out some of the floorboards along with Paula, who's going to join him through that hatch above him. It's all on soft destruction now, but obviously since Moringa is dead, it'll be all up to Paula. The few breaching charges other places. Nesk also has impacts on his lifeline of Zofia, which has impact grenades, which are those soft destruction grenades that you see thrown by the defense. As well as concussions, which match up with the Grismont Mines of Ella, but she will not be in play just yet. Those concussions especially nasty if used in the proper instances. They're proximity-based, so if it gets close enough to an enemy, it will go off and give you the information. Trying to hunt down where the Electric Claw might have been thrown out by Pino. Sometimes, in, as we've seen today, in quite a few of our matchups, some teams have actually had quite a bit of trouble trying to lock down the exact positions of those, but not really going to be too much of an issue here for Team Liquid. 
They managed to get the wall open, but now the resistance will come in in the form of those smoke gas grenades. Only 30 seconds left, and to my knowledge, that was the first one used. So there should still be plenty more to delay. The only problem that's going to surface here for Kamikaze and trying to block it is if the push comes in from multiple angles. Right now, though, it seems it is, for the most part, being pressured from the breach. It's been opened on the wall. PSK is also going to try to put, push the prep kitchen door. Smoke grenade is tossed out, but it doesn't block the exact position I think they wanted it to. Paul and Pino is going to trade Nesk with another one, though. The gunfight's oh! being won by Lick. Liquid and Nesk just shutting it down with three back to back to back. Take a look at this, folks. Right at the end of the round, they line, line right up. up for him. Line him up and he'll knock him down. Nesk, right place, right time, my friend. Ends up finding that fourth round that they were searching for before they went to the defensive half. So Liquid definitely in the lead now going into the defense. And there is Ella. So one of those concussions that we talked about earlier, she actually has three of those. They're called Grishmont Mines instead of concussions, though. But they have the exact same effect. So look for how Nesk will be playing her in the next round. Overall, though, in round six, Liquid... Running down the timer quite a bit, but they got a lot of work done. They were able to get freezer open. They were able to get bakery open. Good drone play to clear out the main kitchen as well before they went for the, uh, for the attack through prep. The only issue that they really had Defending was Sexy Cake running right inside when I'm pretty sure he saw that soft destruction hole that they had made. Really, the only instance that they're going to have that open is either to hold a line of sight or throw a nitro cell, and it happened to be the explosive device and caught him off guard. But Liquid still able to capitalize on that situation overall. Liquid up 4-2. Getting a lot done while running down the time. That was very much the story of how Team Liquid approached their entire attacking half. We'll have to see now how defense will be maybe a little bit different for these guys. They'll continue to try and actively posture and try to split up NIP. Or that things will become a bit more reserved, as we saw a little bit of, at least in the case from NIP. NIP got a bit crazy there, too, specifically Psycho. Trying a couple of those runouts from time to time, and hey, he got three kills. Guaranteed at least one every time he did it, so... Successful, aggressive plays from NIP, certainly working out for them on defense. Now let's see how they can handle the attacking side. Well, we are going to have a fresher face of the offensive lineup. We're actually going to have Gridlock in play, which is something that Liquid did not bring on their entire offensive half. Gridlock is a pretty unique operator. She's a three armor, one speed, which means that you don't usually see them unless it happens to be Monty at the time being. But she actually gets seen in quite a bit of play. And there's a main reason for that. Not only does she have fantastic utility in the likes of her track stingers, but a pretty dang good gun to back it up in the F90, which is what 90% of players of Gridlock use now. But the main thing is with those track stingers, they're great for flank defense. Able to put those down on staircases, really anywhere applicable on flooring. They handle the situation quite well. Julio's actually going to lose one of his drones. He's going to blink back. We've been able to notice that throughout the day. So just make sure you guys are noticing when those drones do die, because sometimes it can flip back. So Muzi's still hunting, trying to lock down the position of members from Team Liquid that are hiding closer to the bathroom and freezer side, along with that are waiting on the inside of the White Hall. Psycho in the meanwhile trying to check out for gadgets, seeing if there's any re immediate resistance. Most notably those Ella mines they need to watch out for as they push forward is if one of those gets accidentally triggered in a massive group, that could be a huge deficit being thrown into Team Liquid's favor if the Ella or another player was able to capitalize on that. Well, Christmas control now for ninjas in pajamas, but they're getting super aggro towards White Hallway. Gonna open up bathroom because they really don't have another means of getting the freezer open. Just gonna have to go for one panel into another instead of just simply opening up the double panel to his left hand side. Liquid delaying for quite a long time, and I'm actually surprised that they have picked up the Goyo even though the Jaeger's banned, and they're the ones who banned it out as well. I figured they'd have some different ideas on how they wanted to strategize without those shields, but he's still in play. Drone gonna work his way forward and isolate out Paula. And in a second, he's got pressure coming from multiple directions here, so we'll have to be very careful about the remaining Whitehall control. He's looking at Posture C4 getting thrown into the right spot, but he's taken down before he can press the trigger on it. So Muzi claims the kill instead. Another C4, but as you can see from the silhouettes, there's nothing on the other side of that one. He's gonna have to hope he can utilize that later on in the round. In the meantime, Nesk just trying to delay this push from the player on the White Stairs repel. He moves in, trying to look for intel, but ends up peeking wide into it off of the upside down repel, giving the kill over to Nesk. However, Psycho pushing those White Stairs gets not only the trade, but an additional one on top of that. Sexy Cake will try and hold from the outside of the cocktail bar, but it will not pay off, and NIP claim the first round of the second half. 
Ninjas of Pajamas needs to establish a good offensive lead here. They need to bring things back and try and at least equalize with Liquid on how they performed on their offense. Otherwise, Liquid will be taking this map. Overall, a pretty good take. And I think that the main thing is, is that Liquid kind of stumbled off the blocks when it came to holding down White. There was a lot of just very weird instances. For instance, the Nitro Cell sailing towards the Christmas door, but the man had already had control of Pixel and swung on him right when he heard the tape pull. So if you... You know, try and take those back and just go, okay, it's a heads-up gunfight instead. It definitely could have gone in Liquid's favor, and that's exactly why they're going to go back to Bar Cocktail. We're already seeing some adjustments come out from Ninjas in Pajamas, though. Dropping the IQ, picking up the Dokkabee. Defenders, protect also your coming into play this time. Quite a bit of here. It's all quite a bit of that utilized from Nip as well. Though unfortunately, the Yokai drones themselves never really getting to see the light of day. There was one unfortunate pick onto the player from Nip that had done it when they played this upstairs, so... Not able to see as much utilization coming from that. Hopefully we'll see that increase going in the next round. Besides that though, once again, just trying to deny drone intel and delay as much as possible. Most notably again with PSK, gonna block out that freezer wall for the second time. No way to deal with that brought in from it. I do not that there is anything that they can bring to the table for it. As I'm sure you guys know, Kali is not really a factor here in this tournament. And then you've got Thatcher banned out. So unless you want to try and float around some stuff with a Twitch drone or try to knock it out with a natural buck from underneath, not going to be many options left to try and deal with that. And even there, Buck is not going to be the easiest option due to the electric walls being much more difficult to spot than the batteries, which are always in the same spot. Yeah, that, those electro claws make for a lot easier tricking, as you said, especially when Thatcher's gone. You just move them into very niche locations mm -hmm. that are very, very hard to get to. So There's some really dirty ones that you can... There really is. People have showed me. Like, someone's throwing this one on Chalet, and it's, like, really mean if people don't know where it's at. There's quite a few of them where you can just stick them on concrete walls. It's like, good luck, my friend. Yeah, good yeah. luck on getting that. It's like a, like a pixel angle to try and kill that thing. But Ninjas, Ninjas and Pajamas overall in this offense so far has been doing well. Julio's going to drop two track stingers down into red, or actually assume it's going to be a drone and a track stinger. We'll have to see if you use two of those when we go to the expanded view. But overall, Sloan City wins the race for them. And actually, no, Julio did use two track stingers on red. That is a lot of tracks. Just trying to isolate out. Wow. Oh, wow. Red stairs control specifically going well over to Good NIP. Luck. They don't want to take any chances on a rotate from Liquid working itself out that way. Muzi is going to drop downstairs at the bottom of red regardless. But try and watch that, and I'm sure hold a good position here. The rest of the team, you guys still have quite a few players playing on Skylight as well, trying to see if they can fetch something out here from Team Liquid early on. But not really the case. It's just a bit of a stalemate right now. So NIP, we're waiting for you to make the first move. Oh, well, a botched smoke grenade will go off on the roof, so no more line of sight, really. A reprieve fire come out for Julio, but this is going to waste even more time and obviously burn more utility, as really all the ninjas in pajama squad, except for a very select few, are inside the building. So, still have Julio and Kamikaze obviously still on the roof. Pino on an upside down rappel on the eastern side, and that really seems to be something that we haven't seen too often from these other squads is plain They're just jumping in rappel, and then they just swing in very aggressively. Liquid not too ready for it as Nest falls on white as well. All of a sudden, ninjas in pajamas has everything going for him. I don't think that Paul is aware of the man behind him either. He's not. All of a sudden down to PSK alone inside of Reading. Has a single punch panel in front of him. Is he going to go swinging here? Did he see the rope? No, he did tried not. Tried to adjust. Yeah, tried to adjust. Tried to flick back, but Pino was already ready for him to rotate up white. Here at the upper Pell and knew at that moment that he was probably dead. So you can see he tries to swing around at the last second, but no hope for that. Beautiful execute from NIP there. Getting a little dodgy on the amount of time they spent lining it up, but when it was far ready to go. Man, it worked. Team Liquid did not know what hit them as NIP claimed kill after kill after kill with only one to two trades happening throughout that entire process. Beautiful stuff. We're not going to see Liquid try and challenge that for a third time in a row and instead the shift downstairs now as NIP has tied the game up at four to four which is three rounds away themselves from being able to claim the first map of the series. And again, Psycho just on this Attackers need to locate carousel of operators right now. He's now on over to Monty, as we just had Dokubi. So we'll try and bring you guys up to speed as much as we possibly can when we do see new operators, because again, we do know a yeah, lot of new people are watching. And first of all, welcome to Rainbow Six Siege if you are new. Hopefully you're enjoying the game or want to buy the game, because I can tell you one thing, I've dedicated my life to it. It's a lot of fun. You should do the same. It's the best FPS out there. Can't even argue it. Psycho, though, going to be on Monty, which his full name is Montagne, if I said that correctly then great, but I probably didn't, knowing me. Anyways, it means mountain in French, and there's a reason for that. 
Monty is a very large operator that has a very large shield that's actually deployable at the bottom. You can extend it to where you cannot hit him from the front. It's bulletproof, it's practically explosive proof, but only for him. And it makes it to where the offense can get a lot of free pressure just from him walking at people. That's literally all it takes is Monty to extend his shield and walk at someone. And he can get so much pressure off of that. And funny enough, Psycho is currently, I think that said 11 0 and 5. And he's the one playing Monty. So for ninjas in pajamas, you can see, it really doesn't matter how well you're doing. It matters the job that you need to complete. A man's about to hit some 180 headshots. I don't know what you're talking about. About to, about to, about to crank a, some 90. That's a whip on that pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that the pistol had a whip attachment. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see them move upstairs what here. What happened here? No, I, I, I want to say that's a bug, but. <laughs> it's not a bug. No, it was, well, what happened? I've never it? seen a hatch, a hatch populate like that. In it was game. like half broken. Like, like I think they tried to get through it with maybe like some gunfire for some reason, which is very weird. I don't know why they would do that, but hey. Well, it's not a problem anymore. And they have Pino and Buck. I, okay, I don't really know, to be completely honest. This is, this is one time where I will say blatantly, I don't know. I just don't. There's there's no guesswork about that. Just embrace the lad M. Don't question it. Yeah, exactly. Just embrace it. You know. And that is the power of Echo, folks. Echo has two yokai drones that he's able to rotate around wherever he wants, usually pocketing one or playing another one on site. Oh, no. Can he get him? He can. So much oh. damage. Cycles down to one HP. Going to have that yokai drone assist him with some of uh, the sonic booms from that. Shots coming out. Oh, quite a bit of damage done. Kamikaze going to get ripped as well. Psycho's been down, so when he gets pe picked back up, he'll only have 20 HP, which is not very much. But Liquid's kind of ran rough shot all over round nine. A big blood trail there that'll be able to tell you that, hey, Monty is quite weak. The Okai drone going to stay up as well. And that's why we see Echo as a mainstay ban, but instead we had that Jaeger ban. Great opening defense, though, from Liquid. Active defense, you could even call it right there. And in the meantime, Psycho still kind of no longer any time for the shield. He's just here to frag oh, at this oh, point. Oh. Another Pokeball. Oh, it downed him! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> and then the smoke finishes off the Montane. That's the end of the round. Certainly not the most straightforward one that you'd see, but he ends up walking back, and apparently the smoke was back there. So, yeah. That's going to kill him. He's... <laughs> He stumbled a while, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it really looked like Monty just fell asleep. He was just tired. That's really just, what it just was. Just finally ran out of energy. He just you know? ran out of gas, man. That shield's very heavy. He needed, he needed to drink a Coke. To could, keep going. could you imagine walking around with that heavy shield all day? It's heavy, man. It would not be very much fun. But oh. overall, I want to highlight just how dang good Sexy Cake's Echo play was there. It was very impressive overall, and it gave Nest two Pokeball kills. So, well, technically speaking, because he obviously got the assist. He just got the downs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, he killed the second guy because he maintained oh, he? the down. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. How, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, IQ yeah. died, yeah. was because the other player had been yeah, killed. Yeah, and then the Monty just died at the smoke. Yeah, well, and yeah, that was also Nesk as well. Yeah, Very nice Pokeball from White Stairs all the way downtown for Kobe. Because you can't say Kobe anymore. you got to say for Kobe. That's how that works. Respect. RIP the homie, dude. All right, well, that's going to take us into the next round here. Team Liquid with the lead once again, but as you might see, it's a very small one, just five to four, so NIP can get back into this. Once again, though, big props to Team Liquid for the very active defense, getting just right into the face of NIP, not giving them any room to breathe, let alone feel comfortable with control of any part of the map, and then just slowly but surely reeling that control back to the site as they got more and more of an advantage, especially after the three kills that were gained upstairs from them. They had full control of the situation. It's something I really like to see. It's great because it, I'm sure it gives the defensive team a lot of room to work with and a lot of uh, kind of safekeeping as well when you consider the fact that they're con they're controlling the pacing of the round, not the attackers as you normally expect. That's kind of how Cafe rolls though as the offense. You kind of just roll with the punches and try and weather that storm and hopefully the defense just runs out of gas and that's how Liquid handled a lot of their offenses. We didn't see them get too crazy aggro unless they absolutely had to. It was a lot of just weather the storm, get through the utility burn, and once it's all gone, then we try and make our move. Ninjas in Pajamas is trying to get a lot more aggro, and if you couldn't tell, Ying will definitely highlight that for you. An operator that we don't see too often, but she's recently came back into play inside of Pro League, at least, for the time being. She recently got a buff on her Kandalas to where they actually equally spread across all levels 
of your uh, body, which would be prone when you can lay down, obviously, crouch level, and then head height. It pops two at prone, two at your crouch level, and then it dumps the rest of them in head height. And I believe a couple of those are as well random. But basically, all you need to know is that they reformatted how those flashes are used, and it's made it a lot more consistent, which has made Ying usable again. And IP wants to be going for quick third floor control here, supported mainly by Julio with the track stingers. So that's going to end up getting tucked down red very quickly in order to give them free reign to allow for the push to come in for Muzi. Muzi, as you've seen there a few seconds ago, has been working very hard to get control, but once again, Liquid so far with a good hold here. Ness going to be able to find the first one, but Pino is there to train onto PSK. Kamikaze has been lost, though. That is going to be the Thermite being knocked out, so no hard reach to be used at the same time. Oh, oh Nesk, great timing on catching the peak from Psycho. And he might even get another one here as well. The nade going to come close, but not enough to kill him. A lot of pressure on Nesk right now, but he's thriving on the inside of it. There's an attempt to move a Yokai drone closer to him by Sexy Cake, but it's not going to pan out. It'll be caught by the flames that are thrown out into the open there and destroyed by it. Muzi and the rest of the squad slowing down for the time being, losing too many people early on, still have a minute to go, and they want to make sure that this goes right. Otherwise, Team Liquid is on map point here. Sexy Cake peeking towards white, but doesn't find too much. Nas get inside a bar, currently waiting for any action. Rotates toward Freezer, finds himself two drones. That's going to be quite a bit of damage towards that utility. Muzi finally making a move from the top of white, claims one. But I don't know if they know Sexy Cakes is still here. They definitely know now that he's locked inside a cocktail. Oh, and they were sending everybody and their brother inside of that area. So now they have all of the top control. Pino, Muzi, as well as Julio, all above. It's left up to Paula and Moringa to try and make something happen. Pino pushes it to a double though. Oh no, looks away at the wrong time. Paula gets put through the grinder and Ninjas in Pajamas equalizes. So much close timing kills that keep happening in this game as well. This is the like third time I brought it up, but man, it's just so unfortunate what keeps happening to a few of these players. They're just looking away or unscoping at the wrong like half second and it's costing them so much, unfortunately though. Team Liquid once again trying to hold the active defense upstairs, specifically on that third floor and cocktail bar area and seemed like they had good control for a large majority of the round. However, NIP figured out the problem and was able to slowly leverage the control back into their own favor, eventually kind of turning the tables and boxing in the Liquid players themselves. And then by the time, you know, upstairs control had been given away, Liquid only had two players left standing. So NIP just wins by overwhelming odds at that point. Well, we we're going to have two operators get switched up for Liquid thinking that the Goyo shields were the issue, and it definitely could be, since we don't have any ADSs to try and protect those. With those fires going down, they deal quite a bit of damage if you're playing close to the shield and don't have enough reaction time to get away before you see your impending doom from the little slits inside of those. So, actually going to adjust Kaid over to PSK's hands. It was last played by Ness, but PSK's stuck to Middle Eastern friend Throughout this entire series, practically so far in the defensive half, he just picked up Goyle that last round. And now Ness is going to be on Valkyrie. An operator that's a little bit more frag heavy, but the MPX really doesn't do it any justice. It's really all down to the Valk cams that help her out quite a bit. Down the last couple seconds here for Liquid to prepare. Once again, having success on this site, but not so much on the others away from that here. As Liquid is going to look to try and shut things down nice and easy once again. This is where they did great work to just completely restrict Nip's movement. We're getting a lot of control, let alone trying to bring the round down much closer than they had it previously here. MP once again, a slow start from them as they're going to spend quite a bit of time making sure they safely get the large majority of their roster, if not the entire roster, up to the roof. Oh, and what? Oh, 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 it's not even just Nesk, it's Paula too jumping out. That's a way to do it. Well, Psycho and Pino fall victim to the early runouts. Nesk, really the only one that even takes damage and trade backs, as he's going to be down at under 25. But besides that, massive advantage. Once again, going to Liquid as they look to control the game. The last thing I thought we were going to see when we saw that lineup was Nesk hopping from VIP window, but that's exactly what we got, Blue, is Nesk outside as well as another member of Liquid. Two quick kills, and that's practically all the soft destruction on the offense. We do still have some breaching charges on Muzi, but they're not going to be of too much assistance in this instance. The issue is now, though, is that they have to deal with so many walls and hold so many angles to try and make this work on this site. And you can't do that with three people. No, you can't. It's just not enough bodies. 
Not enough bodies. I mean, they do have at least that little bit of utility in that they have the hard breach still to try and knock something open, but they're not going to get anything in freezer open. That's all been double reinforced. They're not really going to be able to get good access to any other crucial areas of the map here, too. They've only got four or five drones set up as well, so they're not going to be able to get the best intel, especially if they try to expose these drones and end up losing them a few seconds later. So drone economy is going to become very important. Muzi's just completely out of them. Thankfully, Julio and Kamikaze still have both. And there should be one or two more, I would imagine, from Psycho or Pino's corpses, but... Better play by Liquid on this defense as well to slow things down after they got those two picks. They all just rotated back to site, got the kills that they needed, and now they just play on time because Ninjas in Pajamas is just twisting in the wind. They haven't found an answer just yet. Muzi trying to find some way in, but he's already out of his drones, and I believe the rest of the Ninjas in Pajamas squad has lost at least one more, but they'll lose another player instead. It'll be Julio. Now it's all the way down to Kamikaze and Muzi. They eventually did trade it out, but Paula pushes it even further and gets the quad kill to put Push Team Liquid to map point. Once again, Team Liquid controlling the game for themselves, not wanting to let the attackers dictate the way of play. They go for a wild two-man jump out at the start of the round, both finding their kills, and none of them facing death from those jump outs. They're only one even taking significant damage. Really good stuff there, and a really solid hold from Team Liquid. Just one more stands in their way, but at the same time, one more stands in the way of NIP, just from tying it back up to six to six. So this could just as easily be swung an OT as it can now be won by Team Liquid to claim a one map advantage in the series. Well, kitchen service going to be possibly the last site for Liquid as they try and close out Cafe and Relegation. And so far, it's been a pretty equal showing amongst these two. Ninjas in Pajamas just not ready for the aggression of Liquid on that last site. They're going to be bringing back a familiar face. Doka be coming back in the lineup of Ninjas in Pajamas, an operator that's actually pretty unique in what she brings to the table. We do have kind of a, a decent amount of copycat inside of Rainbow Six Siege where they do a job that somebody else does just in a different fashion, i.e., you know, all of our hard destructors with Thermite, Maverick, and Habana, but they all do it in a separate way. Doka B is kind of like Lion, but with sound. If you guys know what Lion does, he pings everybody with his EE1Ds. She just sends a logic bomb, which rings your cell phone that you're able to see cameras on on the defense, and makes it to where they can obviously hear that audible cue. Also, a little bit of a secondary thing that she can do, she can actually hack cameras, and that includes all of the cameras now, where it used to be she could not actually ring Echo, and also she did not get access to his cameras when they were hacked. The bad thing for Echo is he turned on his Wi-Fi, that was it. He's not on a closed uh, network anymore. The caveat to being able to get the camera access, by the way, you do need to kill at least one player from the defending squad in somewhere where you would have control, and then through that, be able to pick up that defender's cell phone, and that's what you quote-unquote hack in order to get the camera access. Well, these in pajamas need to try and get the ball rolling here. That last round not working out for them, as we've notated, so this is the time to do it. Look what in the rest of the squad of... Brazilians. So bringing relatively the same lineup as they've been bringing before. We haven't seen them play Mozzie too, too much. They've only played him on two of their defensive rounds, but he's been able to have a little bit of an impact. We haven't been seen him steal too many drones, but again, a lot of that does happen to happen off screen, and it's kind of hard to notate when it does happen as well. So I'm going to believe that when it, when it gets picked up, it probably just gets destroyed for the offense. Still trying to get used to this UI. So we've got Muzi who's going to catch at least one of these pests in the hallway as they try to drone out a little bit more intel for themselves here. A lot of progress still being made by NIP, and you can see this time from Liquid, not nearly as much early round contention. In fact, we're about a minute and a half in and no one's taking damage, which has been a rare sight to see so far in this match. It seems that Ninjas in Pajamas and their current instance is quite scared of what Liquid's going to do just because of that very quick aggression they had the last time, and they should be. We do still have presence on this mid floor. Paula's inside of reading, and they also have another person on white stairs. So they can actually handle this very well. It's just if Psycho is going to be able to kill him. He will, but this more than likely will get traded out very soon. No, Ness going to be on the other side of the map. Actually, he's upstairs inside of Cocktail and gets Muzi on reading door. Nesk still waiting for the rotate to the way back in, and actually, a bit of an intuitive guess there as he goes past the bar, swings the aim down right onto the head of Pino. In order to take him out, Liquid's going to stand strong here. Now with a one-man advantage, and under one minute remaining. 
This is very dangerous, especially with the operators that they've lost. They now have no vision onto site for uh, utility. That's obviously electronic with Muzi dying on the IQ and no more soft destruction as well. They're locked into how the floor is currently broken up unless they want to use some frag grenades or possibly the secondary shotgun of Julio. Those are going to be the two things to notate. But the issue is now, though, is that Liquid continues to push this along. It's a triple kill for Nesk. Can he get the ace? No, he can't. PSK to shut it down. It's all left up to Kamikaze as he rips open the wall, takes down PSK on the other end of prep. Plenty of barbed wire and a toxic babe to push through, but it looks like he's going to have to push through it. That's going to be a lot of damage. He's not going to be able to try and rework this round. It's going to be all in Team Liquid's favor. Map one goes to the Liquid squad. A little bit more time. Looked like that would have been a winnable situation ultimately with the way that it was being handled by the last player from NIP. Some good headshots in the 1v4 situation, but just not nearly enough that was needed to close things down. So ultimately, Team Liquid does take control of our first map here on Cafe. They're going to be able to gain the 1-0 advantage so far in the series, but they're not done just yet. They will need to close out at least a second here to try and move forward here in the upper bracket. I'm saying here a lot. Just notice that. It happens. It's here, all here, good. here. It's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. But I think the main thing is is that uh, Liquid overall is kind of outclassed ninjas in pajamas when it came down to it. They're actually very equal, if you guys notice. There was a lot of instances where it was just a quick burst or a quick adjustment from the other team that granted them that win. The one that was very easy to spot was obviously the aggressive play on defense by Liquid, but it really came down to a lot of utility usage, whether it be inside of Whitehalls or what have you, from the offenses and defenses of both teams. Overall, very good showing. I honestly think that we might get a, the full best of three here going into the second map just because of how close things have been. But overall, Liquid definitely lead on a lot of fronts, specifically Nesk. The man is shooting straight today. We're going to have to see how the following maps allow freedom for Team Liquid, I think, on their defense. Because if we don't see NIP come up with a way to stop that very aggressive defense, which was constantly tripping them up in not only early round situations, but some late round situations too, um, even, even on the other side of the coin, when we had them trying to retake on a defensive position. Remember that kitchen round where we had, I believe it was Moringa, potentially another player, trying to wrap back down and manage to get the double kill with the skeleton. Just a lot of things not being caught right now by NIP, and a lot of that leading to their own deaths and ultimately lost rounds at the end of the day. Very close affair though. It was very much a LATAM game and you know in its essence a lot of crazy runouts and things like that as well. So I think we're going to continue to see a much closer affair as we move down the map pool a little bit more. But ultimately I still think Liquid could close this out if that defensive play still remains unrestricted in the second map here. It all depends on how they start blue. Liquid had a very good start to Cafe and was able to snowball that on their defensive half. If they're able to do the same on this map, depending on what side they start on, I could see it happening. It could be a 2-0, but Ninjas and Pajamas is one of those teams that, frankly, just plays pissed off. They really do. Once they get angry, they play well. They play aggressive. And... For right now, it really does seem like it could go either way, especially with how that ended. I mean, it still ended inside of relegation, but it was max relegation. Yeah. Regulation, pretty, excuse me. Yeah, exactly. So, and again, we see, you know, crazy plays from guys like Psycho here, who was able to do that run out not just once, but twice. He does it later on, too. That was the play I was referring to earlier. Moringa literally walks right up behind the two remaining players on the defense and gets those kills for free. That's what I say when I mean Team Liquid's offense and defense is allowing them a lot of either free kills or aggressive plays that, in most cases, would normally be punished, but right now are just not being caught or punished, you know, in either situation by NIP here. There's so many instances inside of this map where I just was taken aback at what had happened. For instance, that sexy, uh, sexy cake shot on red stairs through the pillars of the staircase. Just things that you don't really see happen ever happen inside of this map. So if that's any notation of what or any context of what we're going to have moving forward, Again, I feel like the best of three is possible, but overall, I think that Ninjas in Pajamas need to go back to the drawing board, play their own game, especially inside of that last round. They slowed things down a lot because they were not really sure how Liquid yeah. was going to handle that last round, and I felt like they might have given them just a little bit too much space, and that's how that timer got down so far. In essence, they were trying, you know, on their defensive half at the start of the game, they were trying to do some of the very same things Liquid was doing, but just not with nearly as much aggression as we saw Liquid do it with. You know, they wouldn't push all the way in to take, you know, full control 
control of areas and <laughs> try to do like, you know, two run outs right at the start of the round and things like that. Either way, both teams showing a lot of aggression from their defensive sides, but Liquid thriving in it just so much more right now. And ultimately, it was NIP, like you were mentioning, that came to fear it at the end, that bowed down to it and ultimately succumbed to that pressure. They now have to figure out a way to get back into the game and make that not happen again as we move on to the second map, which is going to be on, I believe, Clubhouse here in just a second. Mm -hmm. I think that my favorite thing about talking to just pro players and players in general is whenever you talk about a match that they played, and it always comes down to this. It's always like, well, we could have won the game if this happened. We could have won the game if yeah. we won that round and we didn't lose our momentum and so on and so forth. I, I, I think the main thing that just needs to be adjusted inside of Ninjas and Pajamas is take it on the chin. Just go, hey, look, we kind of messed up that last round, but if we go back to our game plan, I feel like we can push this to OT inside of our next map, you know? It really does feel like it's Ninjas and Pajamas game to lose at this point. They just need to bring things back in this second map and establish that, yes, we are here to play. Yeah. We are here to win Group C. Because, again, we have three Brazilian squads inside of this group, folks. That's something that we've really never seen before. Yeah, both teams are playing equally as aggressive for the most part, which means that there's equal room for players to overextend and get caught out. And that's just the thing that NIP needs to try and catch on to here as they move forward, as they try to take back control of their own attacking side, and to some extent probably their defensive side too, if they're going to remain a little bit more timid about the way that they approach early rounds based on the way that this cafe went. I don't think that'll be the case, though, considering the map we're going into, as overall they're going to have to play more restrained anyway, just given the way that the map plays. Yeah, funny enough, we got the two most strat-heavy maps in the entire game. Yeah, for, uh, for the last game. and Clubhouse. So... And I can tell you one thing, we're going to see a Thatcher ban. That's going to happen. I'm just letting you know. It, it, that's Especially a, on a clubhouse. That is the Latam special. It's just spread everywhere. <laughs> they, they were way ahead of the curve on this one. This way. actually might be the clubhouse game where you could see quite a bit of roaming just because it is one of those Latam yeah. games. So yeah. we'll see how they play it. I didn't get to watch too much of the C of the... Um, uh, Oh my goodness! Space Station game. I don't know if they exactly. I don't know if they played Clubhouse or not. I, d I didn't check their uh, their board. My memory is not good enough to remember that right now. Yeah, because so. they obviously have a, a crazy Rome game on that map as mm -hmm. well. So, but uh, that's something we've grown to notate with Liquid and Ninjas in pajamas inside of Latam is that they like those very archaic styles sometimes where you just get the first three kills. And you're like, hey, cool. Job's done. I'm just going to go back to site and chill out, and everything's okay. Okay, so Clubhouse was played, actually, in the SSG matchup. Thank you very much for production for that information. That was the first map that they played, actually. So, This is why you asked production, because we're off casting something else, or we're prepping for something they else. Also, they also are yeah. within arm's reach of computers. Yeah. Things up, so yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. So I mean, we're kind of in arm's reach, a little but far. we can't, we can't, yeah, we can't we're really gonna look, do anything. We're going to look, you know, yeah. yeah, give one, me one second, so. guys. Like, no, that's not going to happen. we got to keep looking at you guys. <laughs> In fact, I can look through the camera. Gotta, yeah, every one of you. Right yeah, now. We're, we're looking at you right Staring now. Staring into your eyes. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to stop. There's me. nothing you can do to stop me. X button on your tab doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> just don't somebody, even try somebody it. Somebody just Alt F forward. <laughs> Google Chrome. That's what happens. Somebody's like, ha. I just cost us like 5,000 viewers. <laughs> I'm gonna get a talking to after this map. <laughs> Stuart's gonna hate you. He's gonna be like, listen here. All right. Stop sending our viewers off the page. This is very important. I don't know what you're doing, but I will say one thing that I've, I've loved about the Liquid Squad. They dyed their hair blue again. Oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Specifically Nesk. Nesk is, like, one of my favorite guys to watch play this game. Just because of, for instance, that. It seems like he's always in the proper positions to capitalize on what the other team is doing. Especially in that last game. It seemed like he was in the right place, right time, so many times that it wasn't even coincidence. He just meant to be there and knew how it was going to happen. The man's from the future. Sexy Kick on attack got away with quite a few he situations did. as well. It oftentimes didn't necessarily lead to a round win or anything like that. Didn't end up being massively impactful at the end of the day, but there was quite a few 1v1s where I was certain he was a dead man, but he just ends up just pushing himself directly into some type of fully controlled area for NIP and still manages to get away with one or two before getting traded out. So props to Sexy Cake as well. Looks like we might have a headset issue on Ninjas and Pajamas' side. So while we get that fixed up, we'll just bring you guys through a couple of uh, historic moments between these two teams because this matchup actually happens quite often since obviously they are in the same region. I don't know how many times we're going to have to tell you guys that before you get it. Yeah, that's that's another key thing to take away is that these teams more than likely know each other inside and out for the most part just because of, I would imagine, how often scrims occur between the two teams given their local proximity to each other when they're not here in land um, and the fact that apparently quite a few of them have been here for a while like, and they have been boot camping. So. Yeah, actually funny enough, not a lot of pro teams scrim other pro teams. They scrim a lot of CL teams. Mm -hmm. And that's just mainly because they play against the pro league players uh, in the pro league, pro league rosters in pro league. You don't want to try and give up your stuff when you have to play them on that week. It's very, very... 
niche that you see a pro league squad play against somebody that's Which actually in pro league. It's weird. It's not like too surprising. Um, like I mean, it, it the, is a little siege. bit in certain instances. Yeah, but like at the end of the day, the siege pro scene I've noticed is very tight knit. Like there's a lot of cross team friendships and things like that, which uh -huh. you don't necessarily get. At least not as much of that I've noticed in some other games. Um, so there's like areas for leaks and stuff like that to come out. If the team you are scrimming is good friends with another team that they have to play in two weeks or something like that, you know that's you can totally understand why uh, some yeah. teams would not want to scrim other pro league teams. Is there's a good, good potential for leaks there? Yeah, and uh, especially with being in NA right now, I mean, the the number one pro roster probably to scrim at the time being is probably the Susquehanna Sonics. To be completely honest, I mean, it's it's off time. CL really hasn't started yet. Yeah. They're they're free and they're probably just they're scrimming chilling. their hearts out. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what I would be doing. Mm -hmm. You have all that time just recently picked up easily in place of Goddess. Very smart thing to just be like, hey, we have all of this talent that's currently in NA. Let's just get as many scrims as possible. And they're on the East Coast. They sent letters to every SI team. Like, yeah, they hey probably guys, did. We're like 15 ping away from you. We will literally play 17 maps a day. We'll play we don't any care. of you. Anybody. Does not matter who it is. All right, guys, let's get into it. Map number two between our two Latin American teams. It's going to be NIP up against Team Liquid. Team Liquid currently with the map advantage. The ability to take it onwards into... A set win here if they're able to claim map number two. But in the meantime, for NIP, they're just looking to get started with their first win of the series. Let's see if they can do it here on Clubhouse. First ban is going to come out from Team Liquid. It's going to be Capital removed from play here. And their second ban will come out in a moment. Either going to be that Thatcher ban we've been seeing quite a bit of or something Thinking like about the Maverick. It. I, I think it's going to be the Maverick, to be completely honest with you. Well, let's see. Ooh, drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. Oh, Thermite. Thermite. Well, right. hello. That's not what we expected. Hello, darling. How are you? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to open up this bag of tricks, huh? aren't we, Blue? So, <laughs> Capitao and Thermite removed. Thermite, an operator that has a, the fastest hard destruction in the game. It's his exothermic charge. It's his primary utility. Uh, has a faster fuse time than everybody else does. Obviously, Maverick has to make his own hole, so it takes quite a while. And the Habana X Kairos feel like they take forever after you've been playing Thermite for a little bit of time. Mira going to get banned out. I, I feel like the main thing with the Thermite ban is that in order to create the same hole, you have to use all of the X Kairos. So they can just use Kai to obviously trick those. It's a little bit easier, but having Thatcher up makes that even more difficult. So we'll have to see how they try and handle this situation with only having a Maverick and a Habana. You're probably going to see a lot of Maverick play in between these two teams. But Mira and Echo are going to get banned out on the defense. You guys saw how effective Echo was in that last matchup, but we didn't have access to a Mira there either because just everyone hates Mira. Yeah. They just never want her in play. Ultimately, trying to hard reach with anything except for the Thermite is going to be a very slow process overall and one that you have to do with a lot of finesse otherwise you risk messing it up like you had mentioned trying to do tricks and whatnot onto habanas is way 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 easier than trying to do it against the thermite so you basically have to do it instantaneously right before the charge pulls up with the thermite otherwise you are not going to get it meanwhile with habanas you can start it i think at least with a bandit okay, while it's already been you know primed and you still have a good chance to get it as long as you get it within the first second or two a lot more forgiving at a minimum there. Not going to have to worry about that Hibana play too much, though, when it comes to our site choice here. We're not going to be starting out on any of the upstairs sites. It's going to be basement instead. And this is where Team Liquid will start out their defense. Yeah, this site is especially unique when it comes to turtle setups. See, a lot of teams perform these, especially with the recent pickup of Goyo being added, added to Team Rainbow. And he's actually free for use inside of Pro League now, so he's he's out of his cage as we now on competitive Team Rainbow. Yeah, he's on he's, <laughs> he's on the All Star team. He's made yeah. it. He's made varsity. That's what it is. Moved up, you know. He's made the varsity. He's gone from D two to D one. I always want to be at D one. But uh, the main thing to notate with Goyo, especially on this map and specifically this site, is that he actually makes life a lot easier. He has access to three shields. He's really not played for the explosive factor of those shields, being able to pop those and set fire on the ground for 10 seconds. It's more for more cover as well as angles provided by those Goyo shields. That is the main reason that we see him brought on this basement setup. We've seen a couple different ones today. We actually saw, I believe it was Na'Vi set them up inside of blue, which is a very unique way of handling things. They made it to where a citizen could play behind a shield inside of oil pit hallway to wait for the drop. They also had another one that you could not walk around towards blue stairs. There's so many different ways to set up these shields. Honestly, I think Goyo is a very good addition to the team. 
Which has been proven not uh, quite powerful in certain situations too, as you were just describing there. So quite a bit he can block off, but not necessarily impossible to deal with in a lot of situations either. It just kind of depends on what kind of setup you're up against. A lot of drone work, as you might expect here for this first minute or so of the round. IP just trying to make sure we don't have any of that aggressiveness that we saw, most notably on Cafe, on the Blast map here. Julio, in the meanwhile, going to start opening up the hatches. Of course, he's going to be careful of Fireback coming in from the basement. He's got a teammate to make sure that not only does that not happen, but hopefully, in the event of the worst, I can trade it back, potentially. So, we'll get this open nice and quickly. Oh, a little bit more work. There you go. That's going to pop up in the bar hatch. You can hear Havana uh, placing those charges, I believe, on two of the other hatches as well to try and get those open. Although with a little bit less success, as you can see, at least in the case of that kitchen hatch. Stock's hatch has not even been touched yet. So I think that's two out of three X Kairos. He makes no, all three, in fact, from Pino have been gone. So uh, depending on how much of Julio's torch is left, they could probably still get it with a torch, I think, if he's got like four and a quarter charges. This is so much time. Ninjas and Pajamas needs to make a play here. They're not set up for too much just yet either. It looks like this might just be a main stairs flood as everyone's back on their drones once again. Might send Muzi in through the back stairs, that being blue on the eastern side. It looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. They're flooding the western side, going to have one person on flank. So Liquid's going to have to do double duty. See some shots, a quick fire here from Moringa. Doesn't beg him too much. Nitro Cell sails over, doesn't beg too much on that end either. So now it seems that everyone's just going to have to fight for door frames and Liquid coming out on the winning end of things. A nice prone angle here, begs Moringa yet another kill. And so far Liquid is shutting down Ninjas in Pajamas. Muzi's still on that back rotation, but no, He's actually made his way towards the front of the map, coming down main stairs right now. We're going to see Muzi pick up the next frag. Really the first one we've gotten all round here from NIP, but it's just not enough. Another one for one exchange. Muzi again finding a pickup here, but time is long gone. And once again, NIP just not with anywhere near the control that they need in order to swing onto that site, at least with their lives still intact. So Team Liquid takes easy control of round number one, just on the timer. Yeah, just on time. That, that, that was literally it. Turtle set up. They just did not know how they wanted to handle the site, and they just sat and spun on the timer the entire time. Hopefully, Ninjas and Pajamas can try and fix that, especially going to the CCTV. This, this site has been played out so many times, and I think that this is kind of the, um, uh, the proving grounds for every team on if they can actually be a team. Can you take CCTV cash successfully? Can you go through everything that you have to do to be able to get garage open? Get some pressure up on that CCTV wall, get the wall open eventually, get your lines of sight established, and get the plant down on default behind the CCTV server rack. That's all very complicated. I know it sounds easy when you say it, but it's definitely not that easy. There's a lot of utility that has to be used in proper ways. Definitely be looking to Kamikaze to see how he EMPs more than likely in tandem with a few of his teammates. And Team Liquid spending a lot of time with the setup here, but it should be pretty standard as far as a cash defense goes. Paul is just going to get the two right side garage walls reinforced. The usual walls are also being prepped up here right now. Well, no reinforcement on the cash wall just yet. That might be the one variation. Nope, looking like Moringa is going to cover that here over the next second or so. He's still got both of his reinforcements, so that will get locked up and controlled by Team Liquid. Well. Overall, Liquid still in very good form from the last map. Again, it seems like Ninjas and Pajamas has slowed down quite a lot since that aggressive round that Team Liquid had. Main thing now, though, is is that Ninjas and Pajamas needs to get this figured out now. Plenty of utility still to use very early on. Main focus on Jacuzzi, so a good top clear more than likely going to come out for Nip as Psycho's opened that up. Main priority, though, is logistics, which is going to drop a drone down in. Looks like it's a west to east clear for right now. They might not even go for the CCTV wall. This might be a construction tank. That's really what it's looking like. He's yeah, going to work his way forward. Takes that quick control, like you were saying, over here inside of logistics. It's still very scary having Pino drop first. Hard destruction, not the best idea. Hopefully it had been pretty well droned out, so. It's still scary. The last thing you want is to hit that kitchen, like the, the logistics floor, and have somebody in kitchen blow you up with a nitro yeah, cell. Like a pulse or something yeah. like that. that might be randomly over there just by chance. <laughs> or by purpose, even. I always, uh, I always think the worst when I watch Siege or play Siege because my luck is just so bad. 
I was just like, I bet I dropped this hatch and three nitro cells get thrown at me. You know, like, that, I mean, that's that's really it though, because nine times out of ten, you're completely correct. Something terrible happens to you. X Kairos go down now on the construction wall to cash. A couple new lines of sight to worry about. It's crouch level, so don't have to worry about too much. Liquid with a very intelligent Goyo shield here. You can get it where the angle isn't quite as nice to hold. ADS is going to eat up some stun grenades from Pino as he's back in play from the previous map. It's actually a double shield in that position too, so really securing the rotate from red to make sure Liquid can constantly reattain the position. The problem is it kind of backfires a little bit. And I don't believe NIP really Ooh. caught onto it too much, but off of that, they actually would have been relatively free to push into cash as both of the red players were restricted heavily. At the same time though, there's a very nice nade, a crazy run out from Paula, and it's caught by Muzi. So two to nothing so far, just in this round from NIP. That was so impressive that he heard him. That was a great audio cue there for Ninjas in Pajamas. Issue is now, though, don't have very much time on the clock, but clock and Liquid still has somebody on flank here. PSK with the rest of the squad. It's currently sitting on site. Nesk actually is going to fall next, so make that one. PSK has to do something here. Gets rid of the Claymore with a very nice shot. Trying to bring it back. Sexy Cake makes it the double kill, though. The man with the long stick still winning things out. Pino finally knocks it down to the one versus two. But this gun has so many bullets, it can rip through anybody. He hears that plant going down. He knows the ping's far. He knows he has to be on the door, but a nice swing from Pino. And a great guesstimation of where his location was. Bag snip round two. Low HP definitely favoring Pino there. Unfortunately, the aim from the Maestro is a little bit too low to try and get that instant headshot off to end the round. And so, NIP is going to be able to claim the second round. And just like we had on Cafe, we're going to have teams trade blows a little bit at the beginning of the match and go 1-1 against each other. Liquid felt that... Oh, never mind. I was going to say Liquid felt that was close enough to re-attempt control over cash and CCTV again, but the site selection was not locked in. Instead, they ended up shifting over towards Gym Bedroom. So much like a lot of teams, at least the two of us have casted today, not staying very staunt on trying to defend that singular site. It's going to continue to rotate around their three site choices, which here on Clubhouse, will it's not really a choice. It's more of a necessity. It's more just which one are you going to go to when as they're going to go to the third and final point. It's going to be over here, Jim Bender, since nobody is going to dare to go bar. Don't say that. Flynn is somewhere nobody, in the world. Nobody just, in the realm of normality is going to try and go bar. There we go. That's much more accurate. It's happened. It has. In the realm of normality. Uh, look, it, it was a legitimate match, legitimately sanctioned, and it happened. As far as you're concerned, it was. I, look, I don't like it either, because I hate when he's right, but people have done it and it has No, it's, it's happened with me once or twice, I think. I think it was a couple of USM games with one bar. Yeah, but uh, again, it is just like, why? You know, when you, when yeah. you first see it, you go, okay. Uh, I like I fighting well. in the open with no cover. Yeah, it's, I don't know it's about so you. much fun. You ever just have fun? You know? You ever think about that? You guys ever just, just fought in an fun. open field? That's, that's what trying to play defense on Vox is like. <laughs> you, got, you guys ever just play World War One simulator? <laughs> just, just fight in an open field. Without trenches? Yeah, no trenches. You just stand there and stare at each other. It'd be more like um, a Civil War simulator. You just stand across a field and you're like, all right, everyone's got one shot. <laughs> Don't shoot them until you see the whites in their eyes. Uh, otherwise, the bullet's probably going to go wide left. Those guns were not very accurate. They're not very, no. like, you, you took, sh you'd shoot the man directly in front of you and it just kill a guy like that. It also took, like, like two three minutes to reload. Yeah. He only got one shot, so. <laughs> uh, can they drop a musket inside a rainbow? I want to see that reload animation. <laughs> that actually would be a good gag. That'd be fantastic. Some the, you know what? That's the next thing. Boss G musket. <laughs> Boss G musket. <laughs> Please. Bus cog. We need a, we need, we need a, we know, there's a couple of like. Where's the bikini when you need him? There's a couple of very like stylistic guns that's starting. There's no like, uh, like car 98 or anything in Siege either, like a bolt action. Well, no, we do have the, the Cali gun now, but that's not, not like the only I think style. sick. Yeah, anyway, Psycho is going to start things off. Does manage to catch the smoke early, which is a pretty massive grab being able to knock that out. That's, it's most of Liquid's late round delay capability gone before the round really even gets started as he dies only about a minute into the actual round timer. Do a little break here in the action as Liquid is still trying to make up for lost time. Haven't lost any bodies just bomb. yet here. Oh, actually, excuse me, Moringa dying earlier on as Blue had notated. If I would just listen, chat. 
over here drinking. If only, right? Just trying to get hydrated. My goodness. Ninjas in pajamas, though. Again, this timer just not working out for them. A quick shot onto the Claymore, but it doesn't work out in the end. Ninjas in pajamas well on their way to winning round three after some very aggressive play here from Liquid, and that's going to continue to be the issue. They try and work their way in from main stairs as well as Waits Hallway, immediately get chewed up, spat out, ninjas in pajamas, up by one. Well, Liquid trying to throw everything they have at the early round aggression after the loss of their smoke, and it just does not pan out at all. Even with successful denials on things like claymores and whatnot, still couldn't manage to really win a large majority of any of those 1v1s as there's a near flawless round, if not a flawless round there, from NIP. Good stuff from them, and once again, Liquid's not gonna mess around with the reattempt on that site, just go right back down to the basement now that it's finally been unlocked. Well, if everything buzzing on my body would tell me any different, I'm going to assume the Giants got massacred after we watched that game uh, earlier on. I would think so, too. Yeah, I, I, I tweeted and said they're looking next level right now. And, uh, Just jinxed them, man. Yeah, apparently I jinxed them. So, sorry to all the voters. What are we going to do about these casters? That's, that's my fault. I need a solution. Oh, jeez. How dare I tweet? Keep jinxing us. And by us, I mean them, but they're just, look, that's beside the point. Look, I was doing the opposite of praying on their downfall. I wanted them I suppose, to suppose, yeah. You know? How dare I support? We're trying to be like the, the rooter. Like we the stand positive giants. What's like a nickname of like a positive person? You know, there's like negative Nancy? Yeah. Like positive, uh... Philip. Pete. Positive, positive Pete. Pete. Positive Pete. That's yeah. I think that is actually a thing. Positive is is Pete. Positive Pete a thing? I think it is actually a thing. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up now. Oh my goodness gracious. If Positive Pete is a thing, my 23 years on this planet has just been forever changed. Yeah, that's the thing. Positive Pete? Positive Pete. Look, Positive there's a book. Pete. There's, a book. <laughs> there's a book on Positive Pete, chat. There's a book. Well, I can tell you one thing right now. Liquid is not being Positive Pete. They're definitely being Negative Nancy because they're down rounds. So far, this defense has actually not looked too bad. Really, the only one that came back to bite them was Jim. The CCTV take just really didn't work out for them in the end. That was really it. There was nothing that they did particularly wrong. Is just that Ninjas and Pajamas played a better round and got the picks that they needed earlier on. Last round was really where the blunder happened, where Liquid just lost all footing, basically fell flat on their face. So they need to try and recuperate. We pick things back up in round four. Yeah, Liquid kind of really just doubling, tripling, and quadrupling down on their own mistakes in the last round. So probably won't see any type of aggression like that again, meaning that the very, you know, in your face style of aggression that we saw back on Cafe is probably not going to make another appearance here for Team Liquid just based off of the last round's results. But we'll see. There's still a possibility this kind of changes pace quickly, although I just doubt it'll happen given the NIP seems to have really good control over this attacking half right now. Well, Julio doing a lot better job on this hatch this time around than what he had last time. Nesk out of nowhere, though, gets a kill on the Psycho. And that's some of the only soft destruction, the major soft destruction piece that they have on Ninjas in Pajamas. Moosey being the other piece, but has a lot less. Only has two impact grenades, as opposed to how much work that Skeleton Key can put in. Halfway through the round, though, and Liquid continues to force the opposition back. Nesk with a very well-placed Nitro Cell inside of Armory Lockers claims yet another life. Hitchens turning into a graveyard real quick here for NIP as they just constantly continue to lose players from it. Now down to that 3v5. They still have plenty of excess time to make up for this disadvantage, but they're going to have to move quickly. They got that bar hatch open. They could drop down over here into Moto, but it would just be a very bold move given the fact that Kamikaze is really just alone on that position right now. Still a lot of potential drone work to be done, although both of Kamikaze's are already out on the field, so we cannot utilize another one here. I'm not sure if he has one of his two drones close by to utilize, considering that he went quickly off the first one. Rest of the team ready to drop down a flash assist to make sure nobody from the 90 hallway is going to try oh to move my. on. They're going to jump right in. A double lineup. Kamikaze does get both of those players over by the main church wall, but Moringa still holding the back lane along with Paula are able to shut it down and claim the round for Liquid. I'm telling you, it really is just like Nesk is inside of their heads when it comes to these. He just happens to get to the perfect angle every single time to shut them down in those clutch situations. It's very good play from him so far, but overall for Ninjas in Pajamas, I would say that they are not really changing up their attack strategy for Clubhouse. They're still getting those initial drones in to go for the roam clear, which is wasting a decent amount of time, but not a crazy amount. We've seen a few uh, rounds where they have had their pre places that just read into the staircases and say, okay, there's nobody that's went upstairs. We know nobody's here. We have them hop on early on to see if anybody rotated at zero, zero. Nobody did. So now we know all the top floors clear, and then we 
just take mid floor. That's happened quite a few times thus far. But through the last couple of rounds, it seems Liquid has changed up to being able to fight off site better, especially with Nesk. He shut down a lot of the early take there for Ninjas in Pajamas, specifically in Kitchen, as you notated. But it feels like Ninjas in Pajamas is just missing a singular piece to the puzzle. If they're able to get a little bit more pressure inside of those round, those two rounds that they lost, it would go well in their way. But it seems like really Nesk is the person that's made them stumble. Yeah, the last round, really, the increase in soft destruction that they brought on the second attempt of the basement attack compared to the first one, they notably swapped out Psycho from, a, uh, from an Ash over onto a Buck. And that seemed to actually come back to hurt them a little bit more with Psycho tearing up the kitchen floor along with a few other areas. That actually opened up angles for Liquid to strike back and obviously use things like Nitro Cells as well to pick up those two early kills on the inside of Kitchen. Well, with that being said, round five ensuing. CCTV. Uh, Mainstay of Clubhouse, as it's probably been talked about a million times today. Specifically, usually used with a Havana and a Capital, but pretty default setup here for Team Liquid. Looks like they have adjusted some of their reinforcement, though, reinforcements, though, into construction to hold down the wall for logistics, which is usually a part of the map that you're going to want to take later on, but initially we're going to have the first pick come in from Paula once again. Almost gets the head of Muzi as well. Now I'm going to hear some of these barricades getting opened back up, so he'll creep forward once more. Muzi gets off repel, but immediately reapplies it. So remember, more like the noise going over to Paula, who's still sitting on the inside of those blue stairs looking to delay. For no one really choosing to contest him right now. Julio, hoping that we might have seen the swing from Paula over into stocks, where Julio is now peeking, but it doesn't look like that's been the case. Liquid still maintaining those same positions, and Paula, in the meantime, is long gone, having rotated all the way back upstairs and looks at things. Well, slow and steady is the race for ninjas and pajamas right now. Trying to lay as much time as possible is liquid. And roughly, they do have the wall open now for ninjas and pajamas to play through. Concussion's pouring into garage, but it seems like it might be all on the Jaeger to try and capitalize on the situation. Ness gets traded out here, but no, he's going to be able to maintain life. Paula with a nice move takes him down, and now all of a sudden Ninjas and Pajamas is on their hind heels once again. Pino and Kamikaze separated by quite a bit of real estate here. Down to a one versus four. Liquid figures that one out quickly. Nesk with the vigil of all operators since he's been playing recently. We'll be able to close that one out. Nesk and Paula doing some great work right there, specifically Paula in the early round and still able to keep himself alive, mainly due to just a lack of intel, it seemed, from NIP as to where exactly Paulo was trying to play from. So never really able to trade him back. He escapes with relative ease back over to the top of red stairs and eventually just contributes in the hold in the late round, too, making sure that no additional players successfully work their way in from the breach. It seems that they've figured out that when Nesk is allowed to be a little bit more aggro, that they're getting a lot better pressure of uh, on the defensive side. They switched him over to Vigil. He'd been mostly playing Goyo. He also played, he also played Bandit for their Master's Hold. But the Vigil seemed to work out more in Nesk's favor. He was able to capitalize on a lot more situations for himself. And I think that the main thing to notate with that is that as long as somebody is able to get those early frags like Nesk is currently getting, you're going to thrive as a team. It seems that Team Liquid right now are fire, firing on all cylinders. It seems like they have the game plan figured out, especially with Ninjas in Pajamas staying to the exact same lineup as they have been running. But now we are going back over to Master Gym, a site that uh, is not the most fun to play. It used to be actually very, very defendable when you could impact trick over the wall that Moringa is currently reinforcing. That's Jacuzzi Wall. There used to be a slight area that you could shoot out at the top to where you could throw impacts through, but now they've closed it off on the other side where the impacts have no effect on the wall. Just because it was a little too effective and it made it to where the site was just so dang easy to hold. Got the players from NIP out onto the field, ready to rock and roll here. Once again, looking to take control. Towards Jim and Bedroom here. It's better the final round of the defensive half here for Team Liquid. Trying their best to get that 4-2 score in their favor again. What could be a much easier closeout if things go well for them at the start of the attacking half too. NIP though, should be noted that was also where they seemed to find their best marks was on that defensive side. So. I'm sure they're patiently waiting for their chance to jump onto the defense. 
directly after this round. Yeah, and I think that the main thing to note about Ninjas in Pajamas for Clubhouse is that they haven't had the greatest showings on these. Recent history has been decent, but seems like Liquid has definitely read into that decent amount of VOD, but not a crazy amount for Ninjas in Pajamas. So between these two squads, though, it's been pretty equal on both ends. Kamikaze finding the first pick this time as Ness goes for a rotate with Bandit. But they know exactly where the Valkyrie is, and that's going to be Cycle holding the angle of PSK. Oh boy! Wow! Bamboozled in a nutshell. A kill. That was a bait and a half from Liquid to get that kill onto the buck. Nicely done. They knew they had the Valkyrie locked down in that position, so hey, just send another player in. He's not going to watch this. What seek is that? What a transfer! First victim is Muzi, followed up quickly by Kamikaze on the spray, and NIP is left stunted. Pino, he's going to be able to at least find one trade elsewhere over here towards Jim. Oh, going to have to desperately search for more, but can't even stay safe. The smoke grenade flushes him out of his position down the hatch over towards the bar, where he's going to have to re-rotate up main stairs. This is the thing that blows me away about Latam Siege, is that everything will just be slow, methodical, and then all of a sudden there's a double kill, a di guy dies across the map. It's like the team never engages until like that minute 15 mark, and then everything just goes to hell. It, it literally blows my mind to this day. It, it, it truly, truly is weird, but Julio's actually worked his way in towards the Waits hallway, currently holding Logi door. Diffuser's down over in CCTV. Thank you so much, Marciu. PSK inside of Secret. So far, Liquid's actually done a very good job of stalling out this offense. Looks like Pino and Julia are going to hop windows at the exact same time here. Important to know, Liquid assumes at this point here, or should but normally assume that they've lost control and are not Ooh. even worried about that diffuser going down. They're just focused entirely on the site, and that plays beautifully into their favor. Moringa getting this chain double kill right at the end. Look at this. Bang, bang. They're all dead. And that's now a fourth round into Liquid's favor as the half comes to a close. So I started blasting, and it just worked out. <laughs> there was no fire in this. Then I started blasting. <laughs> it worked out. That's, that, was, that was that round then. It nutshell. really was. For liquid, it really anyway. was. I, honestly, I think that that sexy cake transfer might be one of the sexiest double kills I've seen in a very yeah. long time. If I can uh, you know, use that. Four to five kills there coming in from multi frags. So great individual performances once again. I mean, this is, which is like this is like a Latam game. There's no that's no that's not something we we don't say a lot there. So yeah, that, and again, that's why the pacing of Latam is just so weird to me. Still, honestly, I've casted quite a few Latam games, but their pacing as opposed to how other squads play in different regions, it's just very unique. I hate to keep using that word, but that's really the only way to describe it. Is they play such a special kind of siege, and it works out very. well well for them. Both of these squads are prominent inside of international play, and I honestly think that might be a beneficial factor, is the fact that their pacing, as opposed to other teams, is just on different timing. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Well, here we go. First offensive round coming up onto the board for NIP, but they've got a lot to make up and not a lot of lost rounds that they can take. Team Liquid just need three more, and they'll take not only full control of the second map here on Clubhouse, but they'll also take the series, pushing themselves forward further into their group's upper bracket and sending NIP down below to the lower bracket. They'll have to fight for survival for the rest of this group stage. All I'm saying is, is if you guys are coming to the Six Invitational, you better be excited to see a lot of these squads, because honestly, I haven't seen anyone that's just awash here at the... Uh, Oh my goodness gracious, I'm falling apart over here, Blue. I haven't seen anybody that's just truly abysmal yet here at Six Invitational. Yeah. I haven't. There's not a single squad that I just look at and go, yeah, you guys are out. There's no way. You know, it, it, overall, it's just going to be an amazing event. This is only day one. We have eight days of Siege, everyone. This is Friday. We still have Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. Not to mention the double elimination format that's now there in the playoff stage, too. So you're going to have a oh. lot more action going on. I would be so happy. Yeah, after you get through this group stage, everything is technically reset for these teams. They came in from the lower bracket. They've got that second chance, that second life, if you will, back. That's going to leave teams to feel a little bit more confident once they make it past this group stage, especially for our upper bracket teams. Double Elim is just the way to be. It it's, makes for a lot better storylines, I think. 
Overall, though, very slow take here from Liquid as it seems like all hell is going to break loose, and that's exactly what they wanted to do. They were timing that on a countdown. Did not work out for them. Able to establish quite a few lines of sight. Moringa trades back one, but I assume he knows that there is still one more inside of Bar. Checking all their angles, but no, actually, they've abandoned ship as well back downstairs, so it'll be only Pino to die for the defense. Pick that diffuser back up. That was in Habana's hands of Sexy Cake. As we're moving things quickly, actually, through this 3v4. Risky play to get in the face of the Team Liquid initial assault like that, as it did seem, firstly, that they were ready for it. And secondly, that they could have been able to isolate those players out, given a bit more time, but no. In fact, it's NIP, and specifically Pino, that comes in with a stride there, and is able to close out those frags against Team Liquid and get them a man advantage to work off of here now for the rest of the round. PSK working his angles over the hatch, just waiting for some assistance from his teammates. They are focused on the drone game right now and trying to get some more information. They have plenty of those at their disposal, actually, still having four, whether it be in their pocket or on the ground already. Moringa has the most at his disposal. We're just going to see one get destroyed early on. Sun Grenade pours in through the master door. That's going to be PSK, but he ends up stunning out his teammate. This liquid is working their way towards church. It's going to be a church take here. You have Nesk inside of Moto just holding an angle towards the door of Armory as they work their way up. Jaeger's currently playing dummies. Nice. Moringa makes a dummy out of Kamikaze. Julio trade things back though. Moringa to push it even further. Down to the two versus one. But this is the man you want in the 1v2. It's going to be Nesk. He continues to pre-fire and works his way towards the door. Continuously holding a tight angle. Actually gets inside of George. Pre-fires but he can't get it. It was so close. Oh that was so scary for two seconds for Moon. First kill as well is right on point. Perfect pre-fire, just a little bit too slow on the follow-up. He knows exactly where Muzi was at too. He just needed another millisecond or so to complete the swing. Just might want to turn the sensitivity up for next time that happens, as that'll make the difference for you. CCTV is going to be the next site that will go on here for NIP after a barely successful hold. You still have to give NIP props though for the way they played the early round and was able to restore an advantage that not only, of course, gave them the man advantage, but slowed Team Liquid down and made them watch, you know, every angle, including their backs for the rest of that round. To be completely honest, that was a very good attack, even all the way down to the 3v4 by Liquid, especially for Moringa. Such effort to be able to get the kills inside of Long Hall downstairs in some very unique ways in getting them as well. There's not very much cover inside of that hallway at all, so it's heads up gunfights both ways. Get it down to the 1v2 for Nesk, just not able to capitalize when it came down to it. And honestly, that just goes back to earlier in the round where Liquid could not figure out really how to take bar very well. They had the general idea of what they wanted to do, break the soft wall, the single panel that connects from the bar billiard split, or excuse me, the uh, bathroom billiard split on first level, as well as get the castle barricade at the same time to try and surprise them with two quick, quick angles. But ninjas in pajamas went out on top of that, even going down to that one versus one. Somewhere in the world, Jenna is crying over that round. <laughs> You guys don't know who Jenna is. She is a super fan for Team Liquid, by the way. <laughs> well, Team Liquid's going to look to get back their control now. And we've got them spawned out onto the board and going to look to attack CCTV and Cash here for the next couple of seconds. NIP, in the meanwhile, with a pretty typical setup here to defend us. Choosing to go for the Cade instead of the Bandit, but that's not too far out of the realm of normality, especially in recent times, and doubly especially when you consider the fact that we do have Thermite banned out right now, so that's giving a little bit more time to the Cade. Unfortunately, in this instance, Julio's not going to be able to do much to stop this specific attack, as it is uncounterable. And actually, another thing to notate quickly just about the, the Team Liquid thing, they're actually flying Jenna out for Six Invitational. That was cool. something very, very cool that they did uh, for her. So if you guys are out there, any representatives from Liquid are watching, we thank you graciously. Jenna's an amazing human being, and she definitely deserves to be here. So that was a very, very cool thing that you guys did. And tip of the cap to you guys over on the uh, Liquid organization side. Some very quick shots from Sexy K, because it seems like he's single tap firing. Yeah, I was about to say, like, what gun weapon. is that? Yeah, no, it, it is... It is the, um, uh, I believe it's the M4, M4 right? One. Yeah. I'm trying to remember because he has the other variant as well and it's very similar in name. Yeah. Are they both M4s, I guess? Or? Yeah, technically speaking, yes. Okay, one might be like M416 or something like that. Again, we have a lot of guns in yeah, this Yeah, there's game. a lot of guns. We have 52 operators and they all have their own loadout. <laughs> loadout. I think you guys can give us just a little bit of breathing room on the guns sometimes. If we don't get the exact names right. Especially, especially the ones that are basically just like serial numbers. We apologize for that. <laughs> or model numbers, anyway. Yeah, a lot of cool weaponry inside of this game, though. 
Decent take from Liquid so far. Still plenty of time as well. They have the CCTV wall open. It looks like it's going to be a construction take as Sexy Cake gets inside. More than likely going to torch a few holes here. But they do have the X Cairo set up as well, so they're ready to try and take that. Nazca's firing shots towards that panel, just making sure that nobody bandit tricks it. So that's a very smart play there from Ness to pre fire while they're getting those, those X Kairos down on that wall. And that's the issue, though. They still have Julio in play. And with that comes Electro Claws. They're able to chuck one of those on the wall, quickly dispatch those X Kairos, and now Liquid is back to the drawing board. Apollo once again trying to hunt for something here for Team Liquid, but NIP not really giving it away. Once again, next attempt at the, uh, at the Havana charge to go off the X Kairos is not going to work out. So they only have the crawl hole to work themselves into the site. NIP finds the next kill, also a down, which is going to be finished off by a gas grenade to take out Paula. Liquid seems to have run into a wall. They've only got 24 seconds to get past it. One for one exchange, but ultimately Julio strikes it right back. It keeps a huge advantage going right now for NIP. PSK and Moringa are all that remains. And man, PSK is not going to last much longer if he keeps peeking into angles like this. It's actually Moringa that's going to die first. And now PSK left alone. Ooh, he what? actually gets a double headshot lineup. Tries to go for one more, but Kamikaze's ready for it. And NIP get round number eight. What is Latam? There's a lot of standing next to each other. There is so <laughs> there is so many instances of this happening. Like it cannot be coincidence. I mean, they take the buddy system to the extreme. They really do. They just don't care if those lineup kills happen. If you take a bullet, I take a bullet. <laughs> if you take a headshot, I'm getting headshot too. <laughs> I'm getting shot right in my face. I'll be right there along with you. It's very it's an all or nothing. It, it really know. is. It really is. And I honestly think that that comes down to just people holding the same angles. That's something that's kind of taboo inside of Siege is if somebody's holding that angle, you don't also want to be holding the same angle. You need to be somewhere else because it's more effective for the overall hold. They just kind of throw that out the window and go, okay, we're going to hold the same angle, and then we just have these nice transfers that continuously happen between these two. It's actually just a confidence method. See, like, the back teammate yeah, body blocks the first teammate. So that way when he thinks about backing up and, like, not taking the peak, he's like, no, 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 I'm here. here. I'm not moving, so go for it. I'll it's be like, right here. It's like when you're trying to get off your bike as a child Listen, and your dad's trying to... And then, and then he can blame him if he dies. Like, I, you were the one in front. You should have got that. Yeah, that That's was not your my kill, fault. Man. I'm just here <laughs> for moral support. I'm just, just standing here. It's just a system to transfer blame. All <laughs> <laughs> you didn't win the video game. It's your fault. You were in front. So we'll be tied up after that round with NIP getting some better control over their defensive half here. They'll take it to a 4-4 scoreline. Both teams now three rounds away from being able to control the map in the case of NIP and the series in the case of Liquid, or two rounds each in order to take this over into overtime. Well, Ninjas and Pajamas has looked pretty solid so far on this defense. This is going to be the only one that could possibly throw a wrench into things. We haven't seen them obviously go to this just yet. It's been Church and Cash, the two traditional sites. Now we're upstairs in Gym Bedroom, and this is something that they actually had a lot of trouble attacking throughout this entire first half. They got one good offensive take on it. That was in round three, but they ended up losing the last one to Liquid. Off of uh, some pretty cheeky plays from Liquid. They got pretty aggressive early on, able to get a lot of kills, and then again, just worked off of that. That seems to be the Liquid special throughout this entire series between these two is, hey, is things going bad? Let's get aggro, get two picks, and then just play slow. Yep. Very much been the name of the game, not just for Liquid either. We've seen NIP do that a couple of times here, specifically on that first round when they managed to find those early aggro kills. Ended up going on a two-for-one trade. A little bit cautious of a run out potentially from Dirt here as they're going to see Ness hold that position. Tries to go for a little bit of a timing spam as well, but as you guys might have guessed, no silhouettes in the immediate picture, so swing and a miss. I know for a fact a lot of players will do this. They'll time uh, as to where they are obviously in the round and go, okay, if I was somebody, I would be here. And they shoot, and sometimes you see kills happen because yeah. it happens in a lot of FPSs where it's just down to time and knowing how quickly people can get from one end of the map to the other. Moringa, though, with a beautiful lineup through a drone hole takes down Pino. Buck's going to move in and take care of the rest of the soft destruction now that they have dealt with the wall. I'm now it's time to start moving in for site control. Still a minute and a half remaining, so there is additional time in order to work the drone utility. Bit of spam coming in. It does line up. I believe that there is going to be utility into the way, so no damage done to that blue silhouette sitting in the back. I'm lucky enough because I do believe that the uh, NIP member was crawling through the uh, corpse of Pino there, so that would definitely be a... Uh, 
Hear ye, hear ye to all ye travelers. Don't want to don't want to walk into that one. Xkyros now going on the bathroom wall. Frag grenade over for good measure just to make sure an Electro Claw cannot live and adding an EMP as well. So they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink and Kamikaze's throwing lead back. Takes down Nesk, that's a big pick. He's usually been on the forefront of these offenses, able to make magic happen so far. Off onto the roof here from Paul. We're going to see a couple players on Team Liquid repositioning. They don't necessarily have a large amount of time to do this. So they need to execute very quickly. But he's just going to reposition over to the window, so it's not a massive deal for him. Nade goes in. Beautifully done. They had a perfect lockdown position on the Psycho. It may have not even been to get Psycho. It's actually a Goyo shield goes down from that, too. But either way, progress is progress at this point for Team Liquid as they gain the man advantage back. Time again, though, an issue for them. 15 seconds remaining, and they need to find some way to force themselves in. Thankfully, they found that over towards the gym side. Wow. Paula as well, sniping out Julio on just a tiny little angle. They're attempting to stop the defuse from going down, but it's not gonna work, and Paula will once again clean up one more frag to end the round in the favor of Team Liquid and push them that much closer to series victory. Liquid did a fantastic job of forcing ninjas in pajamas into logistics as well as the main stairs and gave them full access to the entire site because of the angles that they were playing. Granted, Paul had a very nice shot with, uh, with the buck and that C8, but still, that's exactly what Liquid did. They were able to establish all of those angles, force them back to a safer area, and you can't really retake from that position. There's no hatches to drop. You either go construction or try and challenge logistics door, and they died on both ends. So back over here to the basement is where we're going to see NIP work themselves towards for the next round. Four to five now, still a very close affair between these teams. Team Liquid now the closest, however, for being able to shut this down. This is uh, one of the sites where NIP was able to successfully control and was able to get around for themselves up onto the board, and that was mainly off of some early round aggression that completely stunted the Liquid roster, brought them down to three players left. Didn't really leave them with a whole lot of room to do much after that, since so little utility work had been done on the hatches and in order to get prepared for the actual site take. Although I doubt we're going to see as much aggression from NIP this time due to the fact that Liquid will be very much ready for something like this. A little bit of a change in the lineup for Ninjas in pajamas. They are not bringing the Mozzie anymore. They're bringing a Valkyrie as well as they've actually exchanged the Mute for what seems to be a Maestro. They also didn't even have Goyle. So a lot of lineup change here for Ninjas in pajamas on this church arsenal hold. So the only two remaining, Smoke and Mute. Because last time they also had a castle. So they're going for a completely different take on how to hold down this site. This could throw Liquid for a loop. Trying to find that default cam. Just yes. Gonna, just gonna say, yes, Moringa. What the heck with that? Just open this whole thing up. It is very frustrating. Just trying to be sleuthy. And he was like, nah, I don't have time for this. Just style points, punch right yeah. where it is and shoot it. And just wanted to look cool for you guys. <laughs> Tried his best, but Paula again with a C8 finds Psycho early on. And Psycho, a very important pick to have. He's one of the most prominent fraggers on Ninjas in Pajamas. Besides so that's gonna go all radio silent here right now for Team Liquid. Very, very cautious play. Oh, and Moringa, this patience could pay off. Saw that little blue sil silhouette sneak into his crosser there a second ago. Muzi trying to make a push, I believe, up those blue stairs, potentially challenge or Moringa or another player here from Team Liquid. Not gonna find much yet. Oh, they do spot the shadow. They know he's there. And of course, they would have heard the footsteps. The drone's gonna try and harass him as well. Nesk, not being too adventurous though, is to swing all the way down the first corner of blue stairs. He's just gonna suffice to be happy with pushing him back down into the basement at a minimum. Liquid, very good job of handling blue in the situation that was going on over there. PSK on the window with some sun grenades to push out the Jaegers, Nesk swings. So working together always makes the job just a little bit easier because they can still play with that drone that was inside as well. So now they have blue control. What are you going to do with it? That's the main story here. So plenty of round to be played left and don't have to worry about too many people on this mid floor anymore. So Liquid's just going to hold steady and wait for hard destruction to happen. So it's all on Sexy Cake to get these hatches open. Down that last minute or so. Do not torch the light. <laughs> there you go. I don't think it reaches that far. It does not. It's not a flamethrower, unfortunately. Wouldn't that be amazing, though? That would be very cool. Be if he could just like dump the actual gas and just make it a flamethrower, it's like a three foot. <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Just set it's a bit more off. velocity in that torch, I think, in order for him to happen. Got to shoot the gas out of it further. He attaches an air compressor. 
Ooh, shoots a little fireball. We're talking about right here. A little bit of a sneaky oh, hole in Okay, they can dirt. fix that. Yeah. yeah, he can fix it. It's just the one top piece. That Hold usually up. happens when you're trying to go quick with those. Uh, the only issue is now, though, is is there a Valk Cam inside of Mud? This is what their execute's going to be. They're going to take Mud as well as they're going to try and flood the kitchen hatch while they push down main stairs, just in case anybody wants to cross over from church. They already have Ash Rush opened up, and they're actually working their way inside right now. So they have Mud Tunnel. Now they just have to try and get a plant down. But they have Kamikaze inside of uh, Dirt as well. Sexy Cake trying to find some safe harbor to plant, but this is all up to Pino to try and see if he can find him. But Sexy Cake still up plant. And they did. Oh, they finally did. I believe there was a Valk cam there at the very end. Paul's got to rush through some smoke as he read into Kamikaze. He doesn't. Plant now going down. PSK dancing back and forth. And this round is all but over. Julio able to clean up the last two kills with a pistol. And Ninjas in pajamas still in the fight. Sexy kick a bold risk indeed to try and plant in the open, but it almost pays off. Almost gets away with that with, you know, completely unnoticed as far as I can tell for the members of NIP. I'm not sure if that was them not catching it or their Maestro just not wanting to challenge it due to um, assuming someone was supporting it. So a little bit of hesitation there. Nearly cost NIP the round. Or excuse me, nearly cost liquid. Yeah, nearly cost NIP. It's late, sorry. Nearly cost NIP the round, but ultimately they do rally back to take control of it. And are now going to move on with another successful basement defense over into CCTV. Don't worry, I looked at the time and I was like, oh yeah, that explains it. It's yeah. 9.40 at night. <laughs> I woke up at 8 o'clock this morning. Oh yeah. Uh, but overall, I would definitely say that Ninjas in Pajamas was able to figure out what Liquid's plan was pretty early on. It seemed that Ninjas in Pajamas just knew what Liquid was going to be doing. They were set up for the dirt take with that shield on the smoke. It seemed like they had a little bit more utility farther down the line of dirt as well. Whether it be barbed wire or what have you, we really don't know because we didn't stay too long on those players pushing in from there. But as of right now, it seems like Ninjas in Pajamas is on pretty equal footing with Team Liquid. Not only in round count, but just everything else in between. It really does seem like a battle of the minds rather than a battle of brawn. The last couple seconds of prep phase here for NIP. It's Team Liquid once again to try and take control here. Big props to uh, one player that we want to call him in particular. Moringa has been having a fantastic performance here. He's had some lackluster stats overall over the past couple of months looking at his individual performance, but has uh, done some great work here. He's currently leading the team at 13 and 6. Liquid so far. Round 11. Bringing in, relatively speaking, the exact same operators as they have bringing. They haven't been shifting things around too much, but that's kind of a mainstay of Clubhouse. Ninjas and Pajamas did the exact same, saw Maverick the whole, the whole time. The only adjustment that we saw through their entire lineup was Psycho on Ash. He took that the very first round, but then played Buck for the rest of it. The only thing that we've seen is actually a switching of operators between two players, Psycho and Sexy Cake, or excuse me, uh, PSK and Sexy Cake, apologies, uh, switching back and forth between those two. The Maverick and the Habana, that being. So, seems like I have a couple of people that are fluid with both of those, or fluent in how those operators work. Early pick, though, is going to claim Sexy Cake's life and Ninjas of Pajamas once again in the driver's seat on their defensive half. Sexy Cake, I believe, being caught just as the uh, reinforced wall turns soft, and I believe a spam through with a good angle is what catches him on the retreat. Good timing on that catch from NIP. However, Sex Case's job for the largest portion of the round has been done. He obviously could have contributed in terms of fragging capability, but from the utility side, not much is lost there. Yeah, Lick was just waiting for freebies now on that flank watch with Paula, and he's holding down things over towards the jacuzzi wall. Pretty straightforward take here from Liquid as well. So Ninjas in Pajamas more than likely having a good read on this situation. It's about to be happening here in just a couple of seconds. Liquid still has a couple of uh, pieces to the puzzle to find, though. Get a Valkyrie cam inside of construction, so Vision's been cut off for the time being. Top of the wall has been opened for impact tricking or whatever else in between. Can possibly fit a nade in there as well, but definitely going to have to worry about some ADSs. Look like Marengo is going to get super aggro there for just a second, but chooses to stop himself right at the door. This might be a kill coming from the Jaeger as the risky frag grenade comes in. Did he get rid of the ADSs? He did, so he destroys the shield and makes it all that much more more difficult for ninjas and pajamas to stay where they are. Mornay's working their way back in there, including the Goyo shield getting blown up. Hibana charge is going to try to knock open the construction wall. Although once again, it seems like it's a bit of a struggle. Liquid not going to leave themselves with the best angle in order to push back in. And in the meantime, 
You've got our balcony player here, Nesk, trying to isolate out the angle on CCTV. Knows that the catwalk player is still active and is still going to be a problem for anybody that tries to push the inside of Catch. They even have a window for on this one, too. Moringa striking next to be able to take out Pino. Nesk goes hunting for that player on the dock on the inside, but is unsuccessful. It is end going to end up being PSK that gets it instead, but ultimately, none of those kills will matter as Nip shuts it down on the execute. You could say Nip nipped it in the bud. They were, yeah. They, they really know. did. Yeah. They did a thing. <laughs> they did that thing. Yeah. They, uh, there was stuff, and they did it. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, all seriousness, Ninjas and Pajamas did exactly what they needed to do. They knew that Liquid had to get aggro in order to try and get some more kills to bring things back. And instead, they opt to play slower. They rotate back in. They don't try and take those aggressive gunfights. They just all play red stairs, and it works out for them because they have the two sectors that you need to hold. You need to hold red stairs, and you need to hold catwalk. Everything else is defendable from those two positions. You don't have to have a body inside of there to hold those down. Ninjas and Pajamas overall just played better Siege on that round. And with that, NIP is able to leverage themselves not only the advantage going back to their favor, but also be the first to get themselves onto map points. Six to five is now the scoreline here. What well, looks like we are in Team Liquid's tactical timeout. Obviously, they get one per map, if memory serves me correctly. And, well, this is basically the last chance they would definitively have to use it. So why not? Let's throw it out there. Let's use that extra minute to get ourselves fully grounded for how we're going to prepare to attack Jim Bedroom. This, in theory, should be one of the easiest attacks for them. Curious to see how much Liquid needs to kind of set themselves up for before going into this one. Lots of conversation with the coach and Sexy Cake leading the charge on this. Sexy Cake seems actually very dialed in and doesn't seem like very much frustration. Just, hey, let's close it out right here. Let's push this to OT. This is all we need. We know they have to hold Jim Bedroom. This should be easy for us. We made quick work of it last time. Let's do it again. Shouldn't be too difficult. Get everything set and uh, get ready to swing things through and try and possibly force this OT. Last time that we saw him on this site, Team Liquid actually had a pretty dang good attack. Able we'll to get Jacuzzi Wall open early on, and Moringa with a threading of the needle through the drone hole to claim the first kill in that round that really set pace for the rest of it. But they're going to need to do the same now to try and push this OT. Once again, NIP wants to secure themselves this setup. You know, continuing to fulfill the role over on the cage to try and block out the initial aggression on Jacuzzi Balcony. But actually, Bathroom 2, although it doesn't look like we even have that reinforced right now for the folks on uh, NIP. And it's been left just completely soft, so more than likely going to try to prioritize Goyo play on that. As here we go, Kamikaze. Now we're going to get those reinforcements set up in the bathroom, finally. Some major issues coming out. Too crazy though. Kamikaze is actually going to reinforce all of bathroom, as opposed to having a rotation hole. Still, Goyo going to be in play for ninjas and pajamas as well. Cycle has shifted himself over to a dock, which on their last hold of Master Gym they did not have. Quick torching of the wall though from Sexy Cake to try and make it soft, make it a little bit easier to open instead of having to try and kill the man inside. And Ness going for the exact same pre-fire, mainly because you really can't see bullet holes at that range, so you might as well pre-fire, see if you can possibly get a free kill. And more often than not, that actually does happen. At the very minimum, you'll force that defender away and make them think twice about the aggression that they were getting ready to throw up from dirt. We haven't seen any sort of crazy runouts or aggression plays really since the beginning of the half from NIP. Uh, when they tried to play aggro in the bar, the first baseman defense, they gave them a 4v3 at the start of the round. So since then, it's been, it's been pretty, like, you know, normal as far as the defense is concerned here from NIP. Nothing too much out of the ordinary with regards to how they've been setting themselves up or any, even any earlier mid-round plays. Oh, full life bars on both teams. Drone play now for Liquid. Trying to find some more information on that middle floor for the time being. Moringa still on repel on the western balcony for Jacuzzi with the rest of the squad. Looking in towards logistics. Sexy K from Paula. Paula still on drone. Sit next to him. Overall, Liquid's take the last time was a little bit quicker, but they did have that initial uh, kill that helped them out quite a bit. They've actually already made a roll, a hole, excuse me, uh, to rotate in through the CCTV wall, but this time around, Nesk has died very early on. 
So attempts to open up bathroom here are going to go very quickly and probably without much interference here due to the frag grenades they have to deal with the extra electric claw if there was even one position there. Not sure if they were able to get it down in time, but either way, Nip looking strong on this defensive hold. Liquid in the meanwhile, still trying to get this wall open. And I have done so, I do believe, but with a man down and a Zofia eliminated, so no longer going to have access to the stun charges in order to make the execute a little bit more secure for this team, relying almost primarily on drone work in order to get them the intel and try and force players at a position at a minimum, and at a worst case, just get intel about the push themselves. Moringa works out well for him. Unfortunately, he ends up on top of a Goyo ship, which is blown up by Kamikaze seconds later. Pino finds himself a second kill on the round in order to eliminate Paula. In the meantime, players trying to rotate in from red. We've got Sexy Cake trying to pull off a sneak maneuver here, but it does not pan out. Other players just jump right out to take out the last man standing, and that is going to be NIP claiming control of map number two in the series. Well, Pino making sure to get on Diffuser as we panned over to Ninjas in Pajamas just before they were able to get that Diffuser put down. So, well, tied up. Did look like just for a second that Clubhouse was going to go Liquid's way, but just could not find it in the last couple of instances. They were able to get the Diffuser down and push it into a post plant, but it was really all left up to the man on top of Red Stairs to try and make a move into Cash, end up losing out his gunfights, and that's going to be Ninjas in Pajamas all the way. So, looks like we're going down to the last map, my friend. Uh, not enough freedom, I think especially on the attacking side for Liquid to, to, to pull off the kind of maneuvers that they were looking to do, especially when you consider the type of things that they were trying to pull off on Cafe. I think the Clubhouse is unfortunately just a little bit too tight of a map to maneuver in the way that they would have liked there on the second half. So things just don't end up going their way in those last few rounds. We finally see NIP lock themselves down and try to play a much more conservative defensive side that ends up going very well for them here on Clubhouse to take control of the overall map. And now tie us up, like you said, at one to one for the series, sending us to our third and final map of the day. Yeah, overall, a very good game of Clubhouse. There, it really just came down to utility usage and those early picks that we saw that actually spelled the tail of the tape very, very well throughout this entire series. Ninjas in Pajamas winning quite a few of those opening duels, and it was mostly Pino and Psycho that won those out for them. Pino actually having the most opening frags for the squad. You know, doing some great work specifically there from NIP, and I think we see not just him stepping up to the plate too, but other guys pulling off really a team effort, and that was a point that I think I mentioned at the beginning of the matchup, was that overall, like, in the kind of individual stats department for NIP, this is a much more evenly spread team than you see with Team Liquid, where you have some very clear front runners on who can make individual plays. You don't have as much of a limitation on that from NIP, which makes them a very dangerous team, because it seems like any player can kind of jump out at any time with the show-stopping play to get them the round. Absolutely, but that's on both fronts. We saw Nesk take control of a lot of rounds as well through this series so far, and they're going to need him to do that again inside of this last map. Whereas we saw him earlier on just fragging out, not dying too often, he was actually the most killed Liquid member on the roster this time around, going 8 and 10. So maybe if they could possibly get him some more information, or that just might be the whole issue, you know, with their play so far, is that they just have not had that information at their disposal they might be able to shift some things around. Yeah, overall though, once again though, NIP seems to be starting to get a little bit more control of things. Our third and final map will truly determine if they've mastered the play style here to go up against Team Liquid. And whether Team Liquid's words of reciting that things are different on land truly will ring true, or if once again, NIP will take a consistent victory over Team Liquid, just as they have done numerous times in the past season or two of Pro League in the online sector, or at least in the last two matches, we've seen NIP take the win almost every single time. I still love Muzi's take on it. Just play good Siege. Let's just play some good Siege. Play some good it sounds, siege. sounds fun. Why not? You know, it's like almost 10. Sounds just, like Latim. We'll just play some good Siege. Like a, it's like a Latim motto in general there. Let's just play some good Siege. This is shoot people. Why not? Let's just, <laughs> just do it. Just jump out. Yeah, just, 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 just jump out, out cafe third floor just window like thing. three times and a half. I still cannot believe that uh, Nesk hopped out of VIP window on cafe. I You don't see very many people mm -hmm. spawn peek from that window. It's a very rare case. Very bold plays. And it's like the, that's the kind of stuff you're, for the most part, only going to see from Ladam teams. That's the kind of like crazy stuff that like the whole squad will agree. Like, All right, yeah, go ahead, try that. Like, just, yeah. Why not? Just do, just do the thing. We might lose someone, but like, yeah, let's just try Screw it. See it. How it goes. Your, your utility's already. Everybody down. else, You're I feel Valkyrie. like they're gonna keep that in scrims, or like <laughs> they'll wait till they absolutely have that confirmed, like on yeah. Intel through like a default camera or something yeah. like that. Ladder's like, no, just try it. 
Ah, just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> Let's just throw stuff at the wall. I mean, we even saw like crazier stuff happen with earlier on games. Like if you guys watched the Fnatic game, Virtue just hopped out a window and killed three people. Like I missed that one. Like okay, all right, Virtue, calm down. <laughs> like you know, it's it just it. The thing about it is, it's so silly that you would never expect anyone to do it, and that's the reason yep. that it works. Yep. That's why a lot of these plays that just happen for no reason inside of pro play, is all because you're like the last thing this man's gonna do is run through that door because everyone is inside of this room and there's no way that they think that they can live. And sometimes it's like, yeah, screw it. I'll run through the door and it works. That's like the common deception for Siege is thinking that things are going to play like very slowly and whatnot and then you're going to have plenty of time to adjust when a defender is something crazy like that. No, it's the exact opposite. Yep. When yep. plays like that happen, you have got to be on the nose immediately pre-aiming onto that sound cue or that position or that, you know, enemy is outside ping. Otherwise, you're going to be a dead man because one shot headshot unfortunately means that if players have good aim, they can kill you in just a split second. Yeah, it isn't just a couple of guns like it is in some other games. In this game, it is yeah. every single weapon. If it makes contact with your head, you are a dead man. There's also just way more to watch in this game, too. Yeah. You know, even, even you know, coming from a avoiding spawn peaks perspective, you know, there's seven or eight windows on each For side spawn. of the map that yeah. somebody can jump out of and just try to run at you from. So. Or they can just sprint out from a random door and grab an angle you've never seen before and you die. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of Siege, and that's why even over the last four years, well, we're going to year five now, so five years that I've played this game, I still go back to it because you learn something new almost every single day. You're at least learning a new lesson per week where it's like, that guy killed me from the most weird miscellaneous angle I've ever seen in my life but I'm never going to die to it again because now I know it's there. It's very much like almost like a sandbox shooter. In yeah. That in that yeah. Players are given a lot of freedom with what they can do, and there's a lot of possibilities for how to properly play the game. Our final map, once again, though, folks, is going to be Consulate. So in my opinion, a little bit more similar to what we had on the first map where you've got a lot more freedom for roamers to try and do a bit more yes, work. exactly. Especially in things like early round, which means both these teams are probably going to thrive on this one and are probably going to feel much more comfortable, specifically in the case of Team Liquid, who, like I said, did seem to have some problems with trying to properly levers their aggression on the defensive side, much like we saw in map number one, and on top of that as well, properly line up their attacks. Yeah, well, Ninjas in pajamas, probably feeling pretty good about that last map, able to close it out in regulation instead of letting Liquid come back, and definitely has to do with their picking and choosing of their gunfights. They've done a very bang-up job of actually getting aggressive early on, getting those early picks, and then playing slow and methodical when they do try to go for that site execute man down. Liquid had to do that quite often because of those plays from Ninjas in Pajamas, who was able to continuously push that even further. So it looks like uh, we're going to need a quick side change inside of the server, and then we'll get things going. But There it is. Yeah. Hey, there we are. All right, guys, so we should be good to start this game any second now. So hold on, get ready for our third and final map of the night. We've had a lot of series go the full distance today, by the way. I'm ending up on all three maps and making this tournament even more competitive once again. It's been a great show here for day number one, and things are only going to get better, folks. We've got an extended format from last year. We've got so many teams here once again trying to vie for the title. We've got a bigger prize pool this year as well, so a lot up for grabs here for these teams. Once again, guys, if you haven't already purchased the Battle Pass in game for the Road to SI, make sure you grab it here before we get the championship weekend as 30% of the proceeds will go to the prize pool for this event. Yeah, it's a very, very cool thing, and the Battle Pass overall is awesome. Who doesn't love content for their favorite game? And there's even, obviously, the free option. You just get to play, you get free stuff. I mean, honestly, I think it's a fantastic system that Ubisoft has implemented into the game. I've already been through it like three times now on like separate accounts, so I, I have everything. And honestly, favorite skin in the whole thing, Blue? Mozzie's uniform. Love it. Yeah. I love that dad stash, man. I just like the, the sunglasses. Man. Oh, yeah. The, the, dude, the sunglasses, the aviators mm -hmm. with the mustache, it's everything I want. Like cool Mozzie now. Yeah, dude. It's like it's like it's like Mozzie drinking what what's the what's the typical beer of uh Aussie land? I'm trying to think. Um It's the one that they just talk about I would I would say Foster's, but that's like definitely not it, even no. though it's advertised as such in the States. So I know that, that was not it. Yeah, but that's but that's like the one that everyone gives them crap for is yeah. Foster's, isn't yeah. it? So I'd be like, Yeah, if Mozzie's so, drinking a Foster's. I've never been to Australia, so Yeah, yeah. My main thing is is like if I can if I can give Dizzle any crap on broadcast, I will absolutely do so. Because... <laughs> I mean, now, Polish beers, on the other hand. <laughs> Tisky. I got that one down. Don't worry. We know a lot about this. Yes, anyway, sir. folks, here we go into round number one. It is going to be NIP on defense to start out the map. Liquid, in the meanwhile, jumps onto the attacking side. 
we're going to end up with another split site start. A lot of teams feeling comfortable on this site in recent weeks and months. And IP is no stranger to that. Lightam actually usually ends up being, I think, the first region to try some of these like crazy offsites. Uh, like they were the first ones to start playing downstairs in uh, Villa, if I recall correctly. Or they were the first ones to try and experiment with it a you'll, little bit more actively. You'll notice if you go back through VODs and everything of old Latam, they do a Defender lot of things first, and then yeah. other regions adapt it and make it their own, and then Latam just starts doing it again. It's funny because uh, it's, it's really weird. It's funny because I think it usually gets like cast aside. Like, yeah, Latam teams do it first. It's like, like, oh wait, it like works. why did they do that? It's not gonna work. And then like they take a look at the VOD again when they do like the second or third, like, wait a second, this actually makes sense. And then other teams start to emulate. Latam's just so smart. <laughs> They're so smart. Maybe that's why Lick was just so ahead of the curve on some things, you know? <laughs> you know? There was the best in the game. Alright guys, well again split. Don't tell Fabi and I told I said that by the way. Don't <gasps> don't know. Don't tell him. Split site defense, so more than likely we're gonna see a top down clear from Liquid to start things off as they'll hopefully swing away control from admin offices first and then look to take the rest of the map, more than likely first floor, followed up by if they need to, some pressure into the basement. But in a lot of cases, that may not even become necessary. Yeah, with this site in particular, it's usually just a top-down clear. You just want to make sure that no one's upstairs inside of admin and get that pressure down towards the visa area, because that's going to be the mainstay place that a decent amount of defenders will hang out. But the, the most notable one, obviously, is downstairs inside of server. You're going to have a lot of nitro cells, and you're going to have a pulse, which is going to be played by Kamikaze to make sure that they know when that diffuser is going down inside of tellers. You're never really going to see a plant inside of the server area, which would be the B site downstairs. It's 90% of the time going to happen on that A site. Sexy K trying to dodge the pests sitting on the inside of Admin as he runs past, I think, two out of three of the Mozzie pests there, so at least give the position outside. Other players can avoid that, too. One of them is going to be caught out, though, by Moose as he tries to hold on to control downstairs here. Tries to once again fend off any of the aggressive pressure that may come early into the inside of those visa offices, too. Nesk, though, more than likely going to start to swing in here soon now that they've cleared out a large majority of it, and in he goes. So the clear shall start. It's uh, pretty uncontested here at the moment, so they're actually going to get control just pretty much for free. And we'll see if we'll have uh, the players, most notably Nesk, able to trade some pressure. Ooh. Catches Moosey still and prone. Not much he can do to respond to that except shoot back, so that's what he attempts to do. Unfortunately, the shots do not ring true. And Ness gets himself a free kill. Oh, Liquid making decent work so far. They have top control with a minute and 20 remaining. So, decent take. Ring is still holding rotate for copy window from Spiral or Long Death. Exothermic charge goes off for the hatch. So again, making pretty good time. But now they have to worry about everyone downstairs and the possible rotates that could happen. Going to use some more soft destruction upstairs. PSK, though, still has that, pro uh, that, excuse me, that secondary pistol out with his scanner. So doesn't want to take a gunfight with that in hand. PSK continuing the drone work here. Try and isolate out any position for the remaining NIP players here. There's quite a few of them still up and rolling. Oh, a nice Whoa. spot out, though. Quick little hard ping from the drone. Tries to go for a second one, but Psycho beats him to the punch on the rotate, although at a heavy cost to his own HP. In the meantime here, we are going to see a nice move from the Sexy Kick. Not only is he going to be able to get that wall open, but it should destroy the Castle Barricade, too, giving them full freedom of movement here. In the meantime, though, the second Castle Barricade will be opened up to a surprise of Julio on the other side of it. Julio, excuse me, as he takes down PSK. And in the meantime, Plant going down on top of the table to avoid any Nitro cells. Paula will take out Psycho as the traded kill is found from the earlier lost teammate. There's the Nitro Cell attempt, but like I said, it's a miss. The player who did the planting is long, long gone. Kamikaze and Julio, Julio are the last players left in the fight now. At least one of them trying to rotate up through Spiral, the other through Yellow. One is more than likely going to be caught out here by Moringa as he's holding into that angle. Second one could have gone down as well, but doesn't catch him in time. Kamikaze gets the trade, but now sits alone, surrounded by the two remaining players on Team Liquid. Trying his best to find out a headshot, but is not going to get it. Paula once again striking to get that last kill. And Liquid claims for number one. Look what a great job on offense, just playing methodically, able to take top control after Muzi gives it up, and then eventually getting a kill onto Muzi as well. I don't know whether he was identified out by the IQ with that scanner that she has on her wrist, because obviously you can see the ERC-7 backpack on when Vigil has it activated, but more than likely it was some soft destruction just looking for a default spot. 
and Moosey just happened to be there. Very unfortunate for him, but fortunate for Liquid because it allowed them to finally get a focus on site, especially with Nesk rotating down admin stairs and getting that kill on the Kayid. That was what opened the door for them to get actually in and put a diffuser down. Mainly because Ninjas and Pajamas play pretty passively upstairs. They didn't try and get aggro from projector or front desk. They kind of just held their areas, but eventually those were meaningless because they were already into post plan. They just had to make sure that no one got the diffuser, and that was it. So in order to fix that, Ninjas and Pajamas just really needed to get more aggro from those positions that they had upstairs to shut down that liquid take overall instead of just getting the pick onto Nesk. So basement is the next site choice here for NIP to rotate themselves into. Uh, pretty typical setup as far as the defense is concerned. Julio is actually going to try and go for the bandit trick on this one. No Jaeger to support him either this time around, despite it not being banned out. So not going to be the easiest thing in the world to pull off, especially if we end up seeing good work from the uh, from NASCO and Team Liquid in order to take control of Piano and just sledge him out of his position. So that'll more likely be the game plan here once they realize that the bandit is in play, which they more likely already realize that. However, as you can see, NIP are not going to make that job so easy either. They've got quite a bit of a roam squad here set up to defend the first floor. Well, seems to be the same song and dance for Liquid. East to West clear, start admin, work your way across. They've actually reinforced the hatch all the way upstairs in admin as well, if you guys saw that for just a split second. So don't want Liquid to have any safe angles to play for the admin stairs if Ninjas in Pajamas wants to rotate later on. Time will continue to roll down the clock here as we uh, get rid of the first minute or so from the round. Once again, though, slow progress is the name of the game as it is for most teams early on in these rounds. And Team Liquid just looking to clear out that second floor. They do catch a whiff of the vigil as his electronics jammer is activated. But the exact position is not entirely known just yet, so they are going to have to clear out second floor. Sexy cake with a red dot as well, and PSK still using this AUG. So weird. I, to be honest, I love the AUG, but the other two weapons just work so much better than that weapon does. I'm very surprised that he's using it, as opposed to the G8A1, which is a lot of fan favorites right now. I think ultimately just coming down to personal preference at the end of the day in that regard. I mean, it does, but the thing is that the G8A1 has more bullets and a better rate of fire. So, it, like, it is, you know, pick your favorite weapon, but then it's also like this gun is just literally an R4C with more bullets, you know? Yeah. And I will always argue for the R4C because I am a disgusting Ash main. So that's, that's, true. that's, that's right. how that that's, works. That's true as well. Yeah, I'm just you know, I'm <laughs> I'm reformed. I'm an I'm a decently smart Ash Jaeger main. Like you know, again that's why they pay me the medium bucks. I said that earlier. That comes down to the last minute of the round as Team Liquid start to transition some of their positions from the upstairs into say piano. Or now, I think it was actually Nesk, the player, to do that, who drops down, finally catches Psycho, because they either missed the drop down from him or didn't call it. So Doc ends up running right into Nesk there inside of the room. But now they have all the soft destruction in the world inside of Piano, and Psycho's dead now, as you said, so it doesn't look like they have too much rotate potential to come through and help them. Paula with another pick, and that's going to be quite a long one. It's going to be the angle that they made for the admin stairs. At Look down into lockers. You get that inside a short desk all the way up top. A good angle to be able to establish. Moringa just having a heyday and liquid flood site. Don't even need to put a diffuser down to shoot everybody in the face, and that'll claim their second round. Not really much to say in the favor of Nip on that one, unfortunately. No. Just a liquid putting on a clinic in that situation. Has the quick little clear out of the second floor, even you know faster follow up on the first floor, especially after we saw I think it was Nesk dropping down on the sledge and being able to take out Nip's dock from the equation, and then once again just a little bit of drone work to the inside, get some relative positions of the remaining two or three players that are still up at that point for the folks on NIP, get the wall open, execute, and they do it pretty much flawlessly. I think the main thing to notate for these two teams is well. The defensive bands are really coming back to bite ninjas and pajamas. No echo, no maestro, nobody to really keep an eye on or very close to sight. Seems like ninjas and pajamas is lost for info, and Liquid keeps capitalizing on those situations. So we'll see if Liquid can possibly continue this, or if ninjas and pajamas can fix it. They have access to Valkyrie, but since PSK continues to play IQ, you're more than likely not going to see that. They could always go for the route of adopting to bulletproof cameras 
or just try and play some more aggressive Mozzie pests to get some cameras to set up for better vision. Yeah, I would say, honestly, like Bulletproof is probably going to be their best bet to try and get the extra vision that they need right now. Valkans, we've seen PSK on the IQ. He's been doing a lot of very thorough work, especially in the early and mid round. So I don't really think it's a relative certainty that the Valkans are going to be left up and make a you know a massive difference at the end of the round and give them some huge amount of intel they would have otherwise missed. It's got to come from something else. And like you said, really the only other option is going to be something like Bulletproof camps. Yeah, well, they are going to bring another type of information operator. We're going to have Mira. We haven't seen her today yet, Blue, because she's been banned out quite often. But we'll bring her here on consulate for the bottom hold. And she's actually got a very nice setup here. Kamikaze opting to set one inside of kitchen as well as in security office, both facing towards the garage, which is the traditional way to set them up. They're just very nice because you know exactly when to use your utility. There is no guessing game. It's all, okay, I see him walk in, I use my nitro cell. I see him walk in, I use my smoke, or whatever have you. Obviously not using smoke in this round, but you get what I'm saying. Paula is going to air jab off as Visa stairs lean down into Archives. Second one also positioned that they can hold full control of Tellers and the Visa side entrance. No follow-up from Paula or anyone else on Liquid yet to try and move downstairs. It does seem as though the overall strategy this time from Liquid is going to be potentially to split push this when you consider the air jab investment so that they can have full control over those stairs. In the meantime, Nesk trying his best to hunt down Pino. He can't safely rotate down, so with the bull in the corner, you're going to get the horns, unfortunately. Pino swings back out, finds the kill onto Nesk, and a heavy call Oh, to Pino's own HP, but Paula also caught. The air jab, in all honesty, is not going to matter now. As he's able to walk back in, he can still actually hold Tellers, and he's going to take the risk on it. So good offensive setup here. Some information game in towards Tellers as Moringa's working the angle. Saw the head once again, but he could get some help from Benches if it's swung by Ninjas in Pajamas. But it's not a prone angle picked up from Pino. So smart, pushes it to the triple kill instead. Make it a quad, have a day, but no, it's Julio instead. I'll take my words back, but still we're down into the 5v1. This might be a flawless round, and this is what Ninjas in Pajamas need to bring themselves back into this matchup. Three in a row is not not what you want when you're on the defensive side of consulate. So it's all left up to Sexy Cake, but more than likely not going to get too much going on. He does have stun grenades rather than a claymore, so he's one cross in the bathroom, so he's got some information to play with here. Only issue is, is that he has to open this door to try and get any pressure or rotate towards tellers. That's more than likely the better idea, but for right now, Sexy Cake is just going to hold towards Ante. Reason for that? More than likely a makeshift timeout. Just gonna play here, see if he can get some pat statting going on or some stat padding. I told you I was gonna do it again. Stat padding, Stokes, stat padding going on. You'll get there. Yeah, eventually, when I can word. When I can when I can word. English is hard. But uh, no, this is basically just a makeshift timeout for Liquid so they can talk things over and try and figure out where things went wrong on this take. So flawless round ultimately from NIP, mainly off of those heroics from Pino. Beautiful stuff. Um, to be honest, a big mess up for Liquid because Pino, there's not really a realm where he should have been allowed to do what he did there. Runs past, does not get caught on his first transition from the inside of Projector to try and go down the Visa stairs. Then he swings back, catches his first kill because he was allowed to get across the first time. Goes downstairs, another player has peeked into him, but he gets hit with another kill. As an up close shotgun shot gets him his second, then is able to hold on the inside side of Tellers for yet another one as he isolates his position well enough to force the player into another open engagement where the shotgun is going to come out on top just due to his reaction time. Great stuff from Pino. Gets away with far too much there. Way more than he should have. And that ends the round just on itself. It really does feel like a lot of the rounds that Ninjas and Pajamas Ninjas and Pajamas have been able to win through this series, though, okay, have had slight heroics go on to where they there's no comeback for Liquid. There's been a lot of instances where it's whether the double, the triple, you know, those multi-kill instances where Ninjas and Pajamas just takes over the entire round. And then obviously Liquid cannot come back with it from the man count and what has happened throughout the series so far, or the round. Now though, going into round four, but more than likely feeling refreshed after that little bit of a breather, a sexy cake just sat outside and waited. Makeshift flawless round for Ninjas in Pajamas and Sexy Cake did not try and get into a gunfight or anything of the sort. Scoreboards are pretty equal though amongst the two. We do still have some people riding bench practically for Liquid. 
very minimal kills coming out from Sexy Cake, but again, he's in that support role. He plays it so very well. One of the best support players in the game. Julio, in the meanwhile here, is going to bring the Clash into the play this time for NIP. And we're going to see it deployed over here to the inside of Console. Yes, used to love Clash on this map. They would use her all the time. <laughs> I mean, it's it's especially upstairs, right? There's a lot of choke points. There. Yeah, she's a nuisance, man. She's and she can nuisance. really be annoying if, if you know it gets in the way of the main push point for your team. Nothing like just staring at Clash's big bald head. And like, can you please move? There's nothing. You can if, do. I, if I ask nicely, would you step aside? Yeah. The only way you're gonna deal with it easily is something with something like a Zofia hmm. or a Kali, but obviously, you know, that's not really a factor here. So every time she says no running in the halls, I just think no running in the lobby. <laughs> every single time, I can't stop myself. <laughs> Somebody made that meme like right when she came out, and it's just burnt into my memory. <laughs> so slow opener with good reason behind that too from Team Liquid and String. What happened in the last round? They didn't properly clear out someone who was allowed to maintain a position. Don't want to take a chance on that happening once again with an even worse circumstance due to an undrone player. See, Paula once again setting up air jabs for easy control on the inside of Visa office. That'll become the safe space now for Team Liquid to potentially start their push from, or at least allow for Paula to work from. And in the meantime, Nesk is ready to start swinging around here a little bit too from Admin since they've taken free control of that. There's been a relocation of Julio in the meanwhile since there really isn't much presence coming in through either either uh, console what? or to work its way in from the other side. This is a buck in. with stun grenades. Ness taking control of the entire situation. Does quite a bit of damage, but Liquid comes out on the losing end instead. I'm sorry, that just really surprised oh, me that he had fl stun grenades yeah. there instead of frags. Very rare occurrence at a minimum there. Maybe just worried about ADSs. More than likely, yeah. Or maybe Ness just didn't think that he had stun grenades on his buck. That is <laughs> a complete possibility as well. Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe only needed the one second. Certainly he still had PSK in there as well. He should have them too, so. He didn't need the extra two just specifically for this site take, considering what they were going to be going up against from NIP. Slow crawl right now for Liquid, not making a whole lot of progress, and only 40 seconds left in the regulation round timer. They'll catch the rotate. Ooh, even sees the head for a second there. Paolo does onto the inside of Projector. But unfortunately, he's unable to leverage it into anything at this point in time. You still have a Clash on the inside. I don't even know if they've really noticed that the Clash is going to be standing in their ways. They haven't contested it yet. And in the meanwhile, Pino is lined up and ready to go for a second kill. Finds Sexy Cake this time around. And it brings the numbers for Liquid down to only two. Paula and Moringa left against the world. Now only one. Moringa alone trying to deal with the Clash. It's just too much to handle, unfortunately. NIP close out another round. She makes those gunfights so difficult. Clash's CCE shield actually slows you down to practically a halt. You can barely walk when she is stunning you with that shield, and obviously you can't shoot her back. That's why you saw the Thatcher try and throw an EMP grenade on the ground to disable the CCE shield long enough for him to find a gunfight, but it didn't work out in the end. Overall, Liquid trying to force things onto site really didn't work when it came to attack and vending upstairs and long desk. Just ninjas in pajamas had the better setup. And one thing also to just notate through this match so far is that Liquid is not attacking yellow at all. That's something that is a mainstay without with every single region that we've seen play consulate so far, is that everyone starts with the yellow slash console take and then pushes across that way instead. No real admin takes have happened today, all except for Liquid. So with Liquid changing up the mainstay here, at least trying to. They'll run into that brick wall that was the clash, and unfortunately end up dropping the round on NIP. Rebounding here and tying us up once again at 2-2. Two to two. NIP looking to hopefully try and take an advantage of themselves while they have moved over into lobby now. Not going to be too crazy of an operator lineup. They'll utilize Pino downstairs more than likely to try and leverage intel. Maybe even get themselves a nice Nitro Cell lineup. Not even just going to be that position either. you got players that will be holding upstairs. You've got the Smoke, which will more likely, if they're playing the standard method of using Smoke, will be played inside a projector. That doesn't look like it's going to be the case right now with Julio holding the projector room at this point in time. And it looks like Liquid is going to go the tried and true method. We're going back to an admin take here, Blue. More drones pouring in, but the issue is now is that Ninjas in Pajamas knows exactly where this is going to be coming from. Liquid has not shifted any way so or how. 
the series so far on offense. Paul is going to be dealt with very quickly as he works his way through admin. Muzi will be, or excuse me, through Visa. And uh, Muzi quickly dispatches him. Rest of the squad, though, currently on repel, just holding angles. They do have some presence over towards Spiral. Nesk going to quickly get inside of admin now, the upstairs office, as opposed to Visa underneath. Quickly remind myself, but some nice shots from Nesk as he pre-fires -fire, pre towards the bottom of admin stairs. Liquid really just losing so many players in the early round right now here, and unfortunately not able to off very often anyway trade that back into their favor down to a 4v4 or 3v3, as we've been seeing over the past couple rounds of that NIP has looked to take a bit more control here. Nesk in the meanwhile has already got the hatch open, leaning down into the inside of Visa. But not much info to gleam from that hatch, so I'm gonna move away from it. And I'll try to check the archive stairs down below him as well. They've got a good idea that Pino is lurking all around the archives area itself, which, hey, that's exactly where he is. They've got the right read on it. The question is, they need to confirm it for themselves, and it looks like they got a drone back in that side archives hall. So they should have confirmed, well, confirmation that Pino is hiding in that position. Oh, oh my Nice God. advanced intel from Nesk as well into Muzi's position. Aims right into the angle. Beautiful pre-fire to take him out of the picture. And there's that trade to bring us back down into a much more even 4v4 fight. Well, if you ever thought Nesk lost any of his spunk, you'd be sorely mistaken. That was an incredible pre-fire from him. Only rough thing is now, though, Liquid very short on time. Some quick shots. Smoke's been down, though. Moringa claims the kill with a nicely placed headshot onto a crawling kamikaze. 45 seconds remain, and it seems that Liquid is starting to win things on all fronts. Julio battles back with a trade onto Sexy Cake, as Sexy Cake took down Cycle. They have to worry about the Diffuser now. Still a lobby take. Looks like they are set up to go for a circle desk plant here if they're able to get the default side. Some shots now, though, and it's actually going to be through the anti-window. PSK not ready for Julio to get aggressive, and it seems like Julio is on the forefront of this hold. Do you have someone playing in grass, though? It's going to be Pino, who's currently uh, currently inside of grass, waiting for them to drop down the pr uh, projector hatch here. That's exactly what's going to happen. Seems like the hot marks just now come out. Didn't Was not ready for Pino to peek. Pino gets, actually, assistance from Julio inside of Antichamber. Ninjas in pajamas with round five. Overall, a very successful defense for them so far. Some unfortunate timing as we came down to the wire there for Team Liquid, most notably Julio getting uncaught as he attempted to peek the window. There was a player from Team Liquid that was trained on that angle about two or three seconds before he peeked it, and unfortunately that player looked away. Again, timing uh, often being the name of the game. We talked about this a couple of times in the first map. We didn't have as much of it happening over on Clubhouse, but once again, it's reared its ugly face out and cost a very crucial life of a Team Liquid player. And ultimately, the round there as NIP do take control and now push ahead with the lead. Three to two. Also back to basement now. A little bit of a safer sight pick for them, potentially. Yeah, that is the main issue for Liquid right now, isn't it? Is that it seems like they're able to get to the point where they want to execute, but it just gets that shut down every single time they go for it. Seems like there's always that last objective or last piece that they need to get around in order to get a diffuser down. And it, they just stumble on it every single time. They just fumble and they can't really do anything about it. Last time it was the clash they couldn't get around on the projected door. This time it was the man, Julio, playing inside of Antichamber. So with Team Liquid falling apart, often in mid to late round situations, they're going to have to look to rally quickly. I mean, they've only got one more attacking round, so let's hope the discussions, if there were any, about how to fix this will bear fruit here in the sixth and final round. Because if not, they're going to have to try and bring everything back on defense once again. That'll give Nip a two to four lead. Five Only three seconds. rounds being needed on the attacking side in order to close things down. It's just time to spice things up, Blue. Liquid needs to try and force things. They need to get aggressive. They need to try something fresh. The things that they're doing right now aren't working. It's time to throw everything that you thought out the window and just play Siege. You need to be you need to be flexible. You need to adjust. And that's something that we haven't seen too much of from Liquid just yet. All right, well, Liquid's out on the board in the meanwhile. A very, very solid hold here, set up once again from NIP. Psycho going to be playing over to the inside of Piano, trying to deny control of that for as long as the round should allow him. Not the only player in a position like that, too. You've got Muzi, I believe, who is also going to be holding upstairs. I'm trying to see here, but it's looking like 
We're going to see similar clears from Team Liquid this time. Moosey's actually not even fully upstairs right now. I believe it's... Uh, I don't see who else they have. I think it's Pino, actually, that's playing on the Visa stairs. Yeah. Yes, it is. Pino playing with Moosey to a certain extent. Thank you, Marcy. Um, and is going to try and hold control of not only that position upstairs, but the window as well. Isn't he just a darling? Helps out. Help us out, you know. So many instances. Liquid, though, again, very slow-paced off the blocks. Drone play. Find some info inside of Tellers, but the site is downstairs. Seems like they might go for an East Clear here once again. This is a very, very, very traditional way of handling Consulate. Just clear floor by floor and make sure that they can't rotate away safely. And it doesn't seem like it's going to work out once again. Equal trades between these two teams. This PSK is barreling down on yet another, but it's going to be a rotate from underneath by Paula that eventually picks up Pino coming down Advent Stairs. Paula trying to isolate out of their angle for himself downstairs, but a lot of drone work still being done by the members of Team Liquid. But either way, looking like they've cleaned up the early round performance quite a bit here, not getting tripped up by any of the initial roam presence from NIP established upstairs here. Too much, anyway. So they still are able to hold a man advantage at the end of the day and deal with that two-man setup in Muzi and Pino Psycho. Should still be a factor here, however, and I believe he's positioned himself right over there on yellow. They're going to try and nade him out. Could have went for it. Might have been a success as well, but not this time. Because he ends up retracting it for use later on in the round, so Mozzie's going to continue to cause delay at yellow. Not an area where Team Liquid necessarily needs control, as past runs have indicated to us, but they still seem fearful of it, regardless of the fact that they're not actively trying to uh, contest it at this point. There we go, though, finally forcing him back, and either not catching the angle that those Zofia charges were coming from, or just proving to be ignorant to it, ends up walking right in. Moringa's angle for an easy kill. Julio, however, going to be able to move in with a double kill, following it up, starting to trade these kills back. We're even again down to a 2v2, and now the problem is there's only 20 seconds left. Really not even a massive amount of time to get this wall open, but they're going to have to do it just so they have more than one angle to play off of. This is the issue. Julio barreling down admin stairs to assist his teammate. Worried about yellow. That's a triple for him on the round. All they have to do is find one. Julio. And just in pajamas. Oh my, this is the issue. Liquid continues to get these early picks, but it's not doing anything for them. All it does is come down to Julio with a very nice rotate up those admin stairs, gets a quick double kill, comes back downstairs to assist Kamikaze, sitting in between the two cars. Bada bing, bada boom. You have another round for Ninjas and Pajamas. They're on the offensive side now, but again, the thing about this squad, and specifically Ninjas and Pajamas, if you guys do not watch Latam very often, is they play so aggro on their defenses, right? So going over to the offense, they're probably going to see a little bit more. And actually, just to go back to the other fact for just a second, the other point, Ninjas and Pajamas actually played very passively as opposed to how they usually play on consulate. Yeah. I, this might just be tired me not picking out the things that I should be picking out, but... As opposed to how they used to play Consulate, they would be on almost every single window just taking those early gunfights. It seemed like no one could possibly touch the building. It was literally, how do you get into the building simulator? That's what it was. But instead, they allowed Liquid to get in and just battled for map control the entire time, going, okay, we know you're going to try and get admin, so we'll throw some bodies at it. Worst case scenario, we would come out on the bottom of that. But Liquid just spent so much time clearing the rest of the map they couldn't find anything to do with it. Do have a unique pick coming out, though, that we'll be talking about after this timeout so that you guys also have it on your screen. Overall, much more like standard style of roaming play coming from NIP in that half. Yeah. what we were used to from the first two maps, uh, where they really got in the faces of Team Liquid and took some pretty massive risks with their defense. Much more measured this time. And There's no way they stick that, right? Led to what, the Finca? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Oh. No, they're going to lock it, yeah. Check marks the spot. We saw one other Finca. Earlier today, too, I think. On, I think it was, yeah, the, it was the Fnatic game. Was it the Fnatic game? Okay. Yeah. So that's not... I mean, it's it's very rare. Let's be honest would, on that one. Would you like to go down the laundry list yeah. or shop more? <laughs> I know. You can, you can explain uh, why. All, all right. So time to talk about Finca, folks. So we're just going to rapid fire these real quick because she does a lot of stuff. Uh, the most important factor that you need to know is that uh, her utility, the Adrenal Surge, let me say that correctly so Parker doesn't fry me later, the Adrenal Surge makes it where you have no recoil on your guns. So a lot of the times you'll see her with that LMG just because it has more bullets, but Psycho's going to use the Spear 308 instead. The gun did recently get a buff. Does a lot more damage than it once did. But uh, not only that, it also allows you to move through barbed wire faster. The only downside really to it is the fact that you take more damage from smoke grenades. 
and that's going to be in play with Moringa. The last little niche thing that thing that it does is it gives you a little bit more HP as well as you can pick up down teammates across the map just yeah. by activating it. It also makes like ADSing faster, doesn't it? Uh, just by a little bit. Yeah. Yes, it does. That's the they they nerf that though okay. because it made shields insane for a while. Yeah. So well, the other thing too is apparently a lot of pro players specifically didn't like Finca because it changed the ADS speed and because that wasn't like what they were used to. So no, it's it's the it's a couple of things. Number one, when you activate the adrenal surge, it is very loud. Yeah, yeah. They're like dump, 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 dump. Yeah, you constantly have your effects. heartbeat in your ears, yeah. which for people that you know don't like doctors and stuff like me, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I can't stand it. I hate that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, now, that was a very now I know thing. now I know what to play against you in ten Please don't. Or on your team. Please actually. don't do that. <laughs> Just to annoy you. I hate it so much. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't care if it was like, but it's like, you guys are having a rank game with Stokes. You don't want to tilt them. Please down. don't. Don't find my Smurfs to troll Just me. Just randomly adrenal surge on your face. My, friend, my friends already troll me enough, man. I don't need I don't need help from the general community. <laughs> they cost me so many games. It's like Liquid is currently costing on that offensive. But uh, shifting things over to defense, it seems like they're actually stunting Ninjas and Pajamas pretty well. Granted, Ninjas and Pajamas is making pretty slow progress, but it's progress. That's the main thing. So you move across the basement here. Some more drone play coming in to play. Psycho with actually killing a Paula at a very weird instance here. I'm going to assume Paula stood up from inside of Teller's and caught a bullet for his pleasure. Either way, though, Psycho going to be able to get that pretty much for free. No damage done to him whatsoever. So not much hope for a trade. A little bit of uh, chip damage done on the Sexy Cake, too, but not really much to remark upon on this point. Either way, though, NIP with the definitive advantage. The only issue that they have going against them is map control and time. Now, you can see Nesk just to the left of Psycho's position here inside of the window. I'm not really certain if they're fully aware of it. The caution from Psycho seems to indicate that they are. And indeed, yeah. now, yeah, they can confirm this with Muzi's most recent moves. But they got a reinforcement on that wall, so it's not the easiest thing for Muzi to isolate out. The He's Goyo. also got two shields there. Yeah, the Goyo can just fall back and play behind that. So this is a massive time waste right now. A really good work from Team Liquid to waste this much. It's just a very awkward setup. Another Adrenal Shirts comes in, as you guys can hear that heartbeat. Both of those Goyo shields go up in flames, but it's not going to deal any damage to Ness because he's found some safe haven over in the corner. There's going to be another shield actually by the vending machine with some ADSs. He's already worked his way in, but they're trying to set up for a plant. They're not worried about digging him out of this spot just He's going to be the only one alive in a second here. Yeah, that's here. an issue, but he stops one. Stops Whoa. one in God's name is that from Ness. What a shot, but it doesn't bag around. Some very impressive play, but doesn't work out in the end. Ninjas in pajamas, and specifically Muzi, to win and uh, nip out that round. Another great transfer coming in there from a player on Team Liquid as well. Beautiful stuff from the Goyo, as Team Liquid just keeps surprising us with those plays. That was just game sense of a flick. He didn't mm. even see him on his screen. Just, just cranked a 90 on Right on the head, flick. too. Yeah. Right from the start. So good stuff there. Just unfortunately, the time waste was not enough. The wall, well, obviously, their efforts were focused on that. The rest of the team was still able to fish out a pretty good amount of kills from within the site itself and still take relative control, even though they didn't even end up needing it the other day. The final battle happened against the Goyo himself as he was the last man standing. So in theory, they could have just isolated yeah, him in the box, use one player or two even to hold him down and then taking the site from that point forward down. Well, obviously, they would have had to worry about top-down play if they just went for downstairs control, though, so there is reasons as to why the uh, delay happened. Well, the Finca play works out, my friend. Yeah, I don't, did they... I think they only used, like, one or two of the charges as well. They used two of them. Did they? Oh, okay. uh, yeah, they used one initially, and then that second one, the very tail end of the round. Didn't really seem like they were needed, ultimately, at the end Yeah, of they weren't really needed, but, I mean, uh, again, it makes it where you don't have to counter-recoil. Yeah. So what's, what's there not to like? Besides the heartbeat thing. That's that's very niche though, again. So like it's like me and like ten other people. We just have a group on Facebook and we yell at each other. He has like petitioning Ubisoft, you're like lobbying in front of them. Like, can we change that sound please? Like, Move the heartbeat. It makes my skin crawl. That's alright, I can't watch gory movies, so. That's the funny thing. I can deal with, I can literally sit down and watch Saw, but I literally cannot deal with like somebody with a scalpel being like, all right, we're gonna make an incision right here. I can't do it. It makes me want to puke. No, I can't. It, yeah. I can't watch gory stuff. Dude, like, <laughs> like I swear, man, if I, if I ever got I'm a almost, disease where they had to do surgery, I'd just be like, just kill me. It's I fine. almost passed out watching a show a couple weeks ago, actually, that had like a really gory part. In it. Oh, God. <laughs> were you watching like House? No, 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 no. It was, a, it was a Vegas show. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, well, Ninjas and Pajamas well in the lead, and their offense looking even more spicy. 
No Fink play this time, but Psycho will be on the Dokubi. And throughout this entire series, Psycho has been the man that's been on that rotating door of operators. It seems like every single round, he has a new one that he's playing, but he's back to the Dokubi. He's played her a little bit throughout the day already. She's a pretty unique operator. Her logic bombs come in pretty handy, especially for Execute now, because they counter out Echo. Obviously not having Echo in play here, but the main thing to notate is her one and truly only counter is in play. It's mute. You have to stand on top of a, um, a mute jammer in order for it to deny the call, or you have to walk into one while the call's going on in order to stop the call. So mute does have some way of getting around those logic bombs, but she's still pretty potent. You know, looking for the next lineup here as they're going to try and probably ice out the player on the inside of the bathroom. The wall's open up so slightly. Oh, it's just off the mark for the angle. He needed to get the kill. He didn't even connect a couple of shots on a Moringa, but just not able to find the kill itself. Oh. Nesk is going to swing him with some help. The nade going over the top. Oh. This should force the move for Moringa now. Getting oh, it It's actually, no, it's Nesk, excuse me, in that position that takes him down. Uh, Moringa had the missed call there from before, so apologies for that. And now Pino and the rest of the team are going to be free to move forward, taking control of that bathroom. Well, ninjas in pajamas making quick work at the floor. Now a little reconstructive surgery inside of piano will open up plenty of lines of sight, plenty of time remaining as well to burn a lot of utility. Mira set up for Team Liquid downstairs inside of the kitchen as well as security, but everyone else is downstairs as well now too. Ninjas in pajamas do not have to worry about a roam game, and it's definitely something that they can breathe easy on. Pino establishing some more angles with that skeleton key as he continues to work these. Again, opening up some more flooring here as it's actually pretty slow going. This Kamikaze's worked his way down to the garage now. And it looks like they're ready for a, a no-holds-barred take here as they've worked somebody downstairs. Pino with a triple actually on the round. Julio to clean up the last one with a knife kill. And Ninjas in pajamas, specifically Bob, firing on all cylinders. Surgical execute once again. For oh, oh, okay. What happened there? <laughs> Six-inch blade never loses his <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Julio just with the... The casual goodbye as he ends the round right on that. I feel like you have to say that every time Thatcher gets a knife kill. <laughs> Six inch blade never loses reception. That's true. It doesn't. No. It's not electronic. It does get dull though, so you gotta use a use a whetstone every once in a while. I only use the bone of my enemies. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Looks <laughs> so, like a cannibal, everyone. What? <laughs> He's taking out bones from his enemies. Like, you know, that's not like, what I do. You know, like, I just walk away. <laughs> You just, you just made me sound like a serial killer. Like, <laughs> Listen, you're the one who started talking about bones of your enemies first. <laughs> I just went with the flow on that I one. Mean, I mean, technically speaking, you could use this sharpening block. I mean, technically. No one's going to do that. That's yeah. like psychopath level stuff. And that wasn't psycho, you know. That was, that was Julio. So if it was psycho, then he might do it. But no, he doesn't need to. <laughs> All right, well, we're on map and match point here now for NIP. As the site yeah, let's will focus move. on the important things. Yeah, let's focus doing? on this game we're watching. It's going to move upstairs for potentially the final round of the day here on Bravo Stream, and I believe for overall these streams. I'm pretty sure our alpha stream ended a little while ago. Yeah, quite a while ago, as everyone is currently hanging out in jacuzzis and everything else while you and I are sitting here doing God's work. We're, we're commentating. <laughs> yes, it yeah. might be. They might be. That's cool. I didn't know they made it real. <sighs> How'd they get to Germany so quick? I don't know. I said jacuzzi, by the way. Oh, I get it. Yeah, jacuzzi, jacuzzi balcony. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Come on, get with the it's, program. It's late, man. Don't don't do this to me. <laughs> don't do this to me. Like all all of my re all of my retention is so focused on this game right now, and I can I can feel myself slowly slipping into madness. Let me tell you. <laughs> Ninjas in pajamas, though, on this offensive front, have actually done a very good job. Cycles not even topping the board, which is try kind of a mainstay thing for them. It's mostly been the boozy show, to be completely honest with you. And honestly, Ninja. Of pajama as a whole has been performing very well on consulate. It seems like Liquid really doesn't know how they want to handle a lot of these defensive rounds and specifically how to handle the pressure that Ninjas in Pajamas has been able to show throughout this. Double nades coming in. Both going to get burned up inside of those ADSs. Julio gets a kill otherwise on an upside down repel. They had everybody on that window. The hold coming in from. Julio now as he's trying to see if anyone else is going to attempt to rotate and to take the position of the now dead smoke. Once again, important key to note there is they do isolate out the smoke this early on. That's a massive loss for Team Liquid if they were going to look to late round delay this. And now 
Players from Nip can swing right in. Paula caught just out at the right time as well. Julio potentially saving Pino's life in that instance as he was about to swing on him off the rappel. Well, Liquid now having two dead members have to figure out exactly how to keep themselves alive. Julio still has the flank watch, but gets quickly dispatched by Nesk at the bottom of yellow. Very nice shot from him. Rest of the re, uh, rest of the squad though needs to retaliate. Pina's going to take quite a bit of damage, but he chooses to get aggressive with the skeleton key, wins that out, and makes the liquid job all the more difficult. Rest of the squad though, fringes of pajamas, throws himself through admin as they're trying to pick up the pieces. Still have that man advantage by quite a healthy margin. Two bodies still up. Pino though on his last leg. I'm getting lower, under a minute now. It's not stressed for time just yet for NIP, but they definitely want to try and push towards it. And all right, never mind. <laughs> Two quick kills for NIP to close out the series, and they'll take control over Team Liquid. Two to one, moving NIP forward further into the group's upper stage bracket. And unfortunately for the Liquid fans, their team must now go down into the lower bracket and fight for survival over the next two days. Yeah, and for ninjas in, ninjas in pajamas on that last offensive take, I think it just really proved the fact that they don't have to do anything crazy to win their rounds. Hmm. They can just play the simple game of, okay, we're just going to force this, take control of yellow, you guys are going to have to try and retaliate, we kill off the people that come to assist, and then we get the job done on site. Overall, it was a very clean map from Ninjas in Pajamas. There wasn't anything just truly insane, except for a couple of shots that really didn't mean too much to the rounds that helped Ninjas in Pajamas to win this map. And this I think good siege. I think that this adjustment that we saw from NIP where they switched to playing a much more traditional side, especially on their defensive half here, I think that that is going to be the thing that may allow them to go much further in this tournament than some of the other LANM teams. They do seem like they've made a lot of progress on structuring themselves very well together over the past few months, and that when that sort of LANM style of crazy play doesn't work for them, they can still retract and fall back on a more normal type of play style like we saw there on that final map. Well, the good news is, is that Consulate didn't last very long either. So these players get to go get some very well-deserved rest, especially on Ninjas in Pajamas' side for Liquid. It's going back to the drawing board. They looked very dominant in that first map. Clubhouse even seemed like it could be theirs, but Consulate, there was no way they planned to go to Consulate. It really looked like it was either a 2-0 or they were going to lose. All right, guys. Well, that's going to round out the final match of the day here for both streams. Let's take a look at the brackets for both, for all four, I should mean, of our groups, starting out with Group A, where we saw both Team Empire and Dark Zero find success today, moving them on into their winner's matches and sending Fnatic and FaZe Clan down to the lower bracket to face off in the first elimination match there in Group A. Well, moving on to Group B now. Na'Vi versus Space Station Gaming with the full distance. 2-1 in SSG's favor, and that's going to tee us up for an amazing match tomorrow. A TSM over Rogue in 2-1 fashion as well. It's all NA in the top bracket. I guess we can say NA massive at this point, right? Na'Vi and Rogue both down into the elimination bracket, though. Moving on to Group C, Giants and MIBR faced off, and MIBR took that 2-1, moving on to a winner's match. And Team Liquid, as you just saw, lost to Ninjas in Pajamas, so NIP moving on to a winner's match as well. They'll be facing off against MIBR tomorrow, where Giants will be playing Team Liquid to see who goes home. And for our final group, Group D, which we saw played second on the streams today, we saw G2 have an amazing series versus Reciprocity. Reciprocity specifically falling short to some very unfortunate mistakes, sending them down to the lower bracket and sending the current champion of SI onward to face off against BDS tomorrow, where they were able to take out Wildcard 2-0 in their opening match. Reciprocity will also play Wildcard in the first elimination match of Group D. Reciprocity sounded very, very confident about tomorrow and even confident about the G2 game. I mean, it really was. If a few rounds went in their favor, they ended up winning the series. Close. It, was, it was so, so close, but it's G2. They mm -hmm. don't lose to NA. I think they've proven that through their entire history, as Fabian loves to remind everyone. And G2's coming to this one looking very strong as well. To bring ourselves back over to our Liquid versus Nip matchup here, we take a look at some of the replays from the final map, where once again, we saw great play from Nip come out across the board here, especially in the opening half. Their defensive side played beautifully. Liquid oftentimes struggling to be able to get the advantage they need in the early round, but at the same time, so closely fought, it seemed, up until the very late half, where Nip 
finally took control and ended up with a 4-2 scoreline at halftime. I think it's very proper to call a lot of the instances that we saw on Consulate just awkward for Liquid, mm -hmm. where they really didn't know how to retaliate in certain situations. And it mainly may be due to the fact that Ninjas in Pajamas does play a very unique style of Siege. Their pacing seems to be very unique to them as opposed to how a lot of teams work their way through maps. And again, that can definitely throw off a team when you're like, okay, we're halfway through the round, there should definitely be nobody here. And instead, Ninjas in Pajamas is holding that, waiting for you to make mistakes and it just worked out for them in the end. NIP overall with some great team coordination too on that attacking half and being able to, like I said, to play much more what we expected of a lot of other teams and being able to do the appropriate drone work and then kind of collapse upon that intel in order to get into the site. And even doing good work of catching a lot of these flanks and whatnot as well that other teams were often falling to today. Tough discussion about that matchup though. Let's take a look at the schedule that we have coming up tomorrow, folks. Over on this stream here at twitch.tv slash rainbow six bravo. We'll start out the day with our pre-show, of course, at 9.45 a.m. and move Onward into Navi versus Rogue to start the stream off here. Following that, we'll see Reciprocity play against Wildcard. Fnatic will take on FaZe Clan, and then Giants will play Team Liquid to round out the day. Meanwhile, on the mainstream at twitch.tv slash Rainbow Six, we'll start out with our pre-show at 9.50 and follow that up with SSG versus TSM to open up the day. G2 will play BDS. Team Empire will follow that up playing against Dark Zero, and MIBR will round out the day against NIP as we'll have another Brazilian versus Brazilian matchup to end the day. I'm excited. You're excited. Everybody is excited. Guys, Christmas might be the most wonderful time of the year, but Christmas and Siege comes twice. We're here at the Sixth Invitational, very first day. I think it was fantastic. It was nice casting with you again, John. It was Again, I'm just ready for this entire event. I was ready when they said, hey, you're going to come commentate this thing. <laughs> so I was like, put me on the plane tomorrow, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure leading up to this event. All the hype has been building up to it, and it's only just getting started, folks. Be sure to join us for day two and three of the group stage coming up, and be sure to join us for the rest of the event as well. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a good one, though.